So you arrived in Milan expecting great Italian pizzas, shopping at the high-end fashion stores, or even witnessing a famous football rivalry between the blue and the reds. Well, we don't have the copyrights to the team, so I guess you have to imagine. But what you might never know, Milan is also famous for microwaves. 5G needs faster speeds and higher bandwidth, so when old technology isn't fast enough, new microwave technology needs to be developed to counter the challenge. Microwaves are also easily stopped and reflected, so a lot of cell towers have to be put in the right places, allowing you to be connected to 5G at all time. To do all of this right and efficient, research is needed to allow us to design the perfect product and system. And that's exactly what Huawei is doing in Milan, developing new microwave technology for the future. This is the microwave magician Renato, the Italian dedicated to knowing more about the world and pushing microwave telecommunications into bold new frontiers. Well, let's see what he has to say. Uh, here we work uh, frequencies that are above, uh, much above uh, what is used uh, in the current uh, smartphones. Uh, so smartphones are uh, typically up to 2.6 gigahertz maximum, with 5G it will be 3.5. Here we are testing antennas at 28 gigahertz. So, what does all this information have to do with me? Well, to be frankly honest, nothing really. It's not going to change anything that you do every day, and it's probably not a topic that's going to pop up easily. But do know, the world will always thrive for faster and more efficient ways of transferring information, and there are always people who are willing to push the boundaries even further. You'll probably never notice the hard work that they do, but you can experience the fast and steady speeds at which you are connected. Dear participants, now we open the work of our section, uh, Semiconductor Physics and Technology. And the first talk in this lecture will be done by Irina Vinyaminovna Antonova. Uh, the, the title of her talk is Syntronics in 2D Organic Materials. Uh, please, Irina Vinyaminovna. Good morning, dear colleagues. And uh, the title of my talk is Trintronics of uh, Inorganic uh, Two Dimensional Materials. And. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Nowadays, Tritronic is uh, uh, one of the most intensive developed uh, direction of nanoelectronics. And uh, uh, Tritronic uh, uses the strain engineering method and studies the physical phenomena which is related to def mechanical deformation in solids. Why straightronic becomes very popular um, for two-dimensional materials? There are three reasons. First is uh, the fact that strain-induced effect is very uh, pronounced, namely for two-dimensional materials. Uh, strain-induced effect is uh, well known for bulk materials, but uh, as a rule, uh, this effect is uh, not strong and uh, did not find the real application. In uh, two-dimensional materials, situation is uh, very different. Um, the second reason connected with the uh, development of flexible electronic and electronic uh, uh, gives a physical basis uh, for uh, development of method and uh, applications uh, for flexible electronics. And uh, uh, the last reason is connected with the fact that in uh, devices uh, created from two-dimensional materials, uh, the strains very often is built in already in the created structure, and one uh, have to uh, take into account uh, 
uh, the fact that uh, the strain will be uh, modulated, the properties of uh, your um, films and uh, vitro structures. Here you can see outline of my talk. First of all, we will discuss uh, a possibility of Raman spectroscopy to estimate the strain in the dimensional material, then discuss the attempt to open bed gap or modulate bed gap in different materials. Uh, a few words will be tell about conductivity and carrier mobility, mobility in strain graphene. Uh, we consider different approach to create strain uh, two-dimensional films. Uh, then we discuss some physical phenomena, uh, which is connected with uh, deformation, and then a uh, few words about get structure. So let's start from the Raman spectroscopy. Uh, and, uh, we have considered such materials as graphene and dihalfaginides of uh, transition metals. And uh, these figures correspond to graphene. Uh, there are two main peaks, G and uh, 2D. G corresponded to the carbon-carbon uh, bonds in the plane, graphene plane. And uh, 2D is uh, second... Uh, second order model of uh, this vibration. And as you can see from this figure, uh, application of strain leads to shift of the all peaks. In some cases, it is possible to observe uh, splitting of uh, GP uh, into two separate lines. And uh, if we have present dependence of peak position and the function of strain. Uh, we observe linear dependencies, and uh, these uh, linear uh, dependencies allow one to estimate um, strain in your uh, film or structure uh, using uh, this application. Of course, the um, situation is really more complicated. And here you can see that another factor also affects on the uh, position of peak. Here you can see map where position of peak uh, given as a point in this uh, figure. And uh, not only strain, the strain lines uh, uh, give here. Uh, another uh, parameter that strongly affect on the Raman peak position is doping uh, of materials. In the case of graphene, it is possible to change uh, graphene doping using the annealing at different temperatures, uh, the temperature values given here, because uh, oxygen atoms are absorbed in the surface and leads to P-type doping. And uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, Similar maps can be used for uh, analyzing of experimental dependencies and uh, again, a structure of strain value um, for our uh, situation or for our structure. One of the most uh, widely discussed uh, strain induced effect is an uh, attempt to open bed gap in graphene. Why it is important? Uh, if you try to create transistor from graphene, the, one of the main uh, limitation connected with the uh, uh, absence of bed gap and very high values of uh, current in a closed uh, state of transistor. Uh, really, relation between on and off currents is about one order of magnitude. And so uh, the um, performance of transistor can be improved if uh, it will be possible to open some bad gap. There are a lot of uh, theoretical study demonstrate that using of different high 
kind of chain allow one to open vanguard. Uh, here you can see a different type of uh, deformation. Uniaxial deformation, sharing deformation, and uh, more complicated combination of deformation. And uh, um, appearance of pen gap, as you can see here, uh, possible only at relatively high strain value. Uh, and uh, uh, really, uh, this um, possibility observed only in theoretical study. There are no experimental data about opening in graphene with using of strain. And uh, uh, this effect um, attributed to the fact that Graphene has a lot of defects as uh, rule uh, used the polycrystalline graphene. There are boundaries, gray, uh, grains of boundaries uh, in the graphene. And uh, these values of strain is not realized in such materials. And uh, opening of open gap did not observed. In this table, I summarized the data only for a few studies when uh, you can see the strain values when uh, when gap is predicted to be open. And uh, you can see that this strain was uh, high enough and uh, when gap uh, decelerated that when gap uh, will be also uh, high, but as I already have say there are no experimental evidence of realization of this uh, theoretical prediction. Uh, here you can see one of the uh, study uh, when OSE try to introduce uh, one gap and study the transistor characteristic uh, in strain graphene. And uh, uh, transistor can uh, um, was created with using of elastic substrate. Uh, gate was uh, from with use of ionic liquid, and uh, they also used uh, sharing, uh, which uh, have to be introduced, uh, have more possibility to open that gap. Nevertheless, uh, transistor characteristic is not strongly changed, direct uh, neutrality point. Uh, did not uh, also change on the application of uh, strain. And uh, other parameters of transistors, such as conductivity and carrier mobility, is decreased with uh, application of strain. Another situation is observed for dehydrogenesis of uh, transition metals. The there is a list of these units uh, which are the widely used uh, for uh, study and for application. And uh, we can see the uh, data for uh, molybdenum sulfur. And uh, let's first of all see on this figure so where Raman peak position is given as a function of strain. Again, uh, uh, shift of um, main peaks uh, corresponding to these materials uh, is observed, and uh, Raman spectroscopy uh, can be used for analyzing of the situation in the uh, structure of films. Uh, photoluminosity peak. As you can see, a strongly uh, shift under strain, and this uh, observation corresponds to decrease in the gap of these materials. If you introduced a strain uh, in local area, it can be created with use of um, some local probe or the formation of uh, nanoribbons. In all these cases, 
lead to decrease in bed gap in some uh, area and uh, gathering of carry, namely this area. So we obtain uh, geometry of funnel and uh, can, uh, this situation can be used for introduction of uh, artificial atoms. And uh, we will uh, uh, we will possibly have the possibility to change the properties of uh, this material from uh, for optical or optoelectronic publication. Uh, here, the data about the uh, uh, change in band gap as a function of um, lattice constant for different materials are given. And you can see that uh, oh, the red point corresponds to equilibrium uh, condition. It's compressive strain. This is tensile strain. And uh, the similar characteristic for a lot of different materials demonstrate that it is possible very effectively uh, change the band gap value in uh, the heterogeneous of transition metals. Uh, so it can be used for application. For instance, if you have created uh, some blister from, uh, for instance, molybdenum sulfur, in the middle part of this blister, uh, uh, you will have maximal stra maximum strain and minimal band gap. Uh, if you use the, some nanoparticles deposed on the surface and then transfer uh, the monolayer, you will observe the, a lot uh, observe the structure with uh, variable or modified uh, band gap. Uh, for the another material, for example, black phosphorus monolayer. It's a monolayer created from phosphorus molecule with structure similar to graphene. A strain in this for this material strain leads to increase in band gap. The same situation observed for gaffium sulfur. So using different uh, materials, combination of materials, uh, uh, and the local uh, strain, uh, it is possible to create. Uh, get a structure or monolase with uh, uh, required uh, distribution of the carriers with uh, modulated van gap. So it's very uh, very useful for application approach for uh, development of new uh, structures and materials. How it possible to introduce strain into dimensional film? One of these we have discussed when we use the system of nanoparticles and then transfer the monolayer on these nanoparticles. And here you can see dependence of average strain in the monolayer as a function of uh, diameter of nanoparticle. And the decrease uh, in diameter lead to increase in average strain. Also, it is, uh, can be used uh, some pillars grown on the substrate. Uh, the transfer of monolayer on these pillars also lead to formation with strain areas, with for, to formation with uh, of, of fold, system of fold near the pillars. Another way is uh, connected with the formation of blister F falls uh, during the transformation, uh, during the transfer of monolayer on another substrate. A similar uh, situation is observed due to difference in coefficient, uh, coefficient of uh, thermal expansion of substrate and uh, uh, monolayer uh, if you have used the higher temperature. And uh, one more approach uh, connected with um, using of elastic substrate, which uh, was a tensile. Then uh, it is possible to transfer monolayer. And uh, after the substrate relaxation, 
you will obtain the system of fault in your uh, transfer layer. Okay, if you, you have introduced some strained areas, or uh, you can uh, use this uh, fact for uh, creation of subsystem. And I'd like to give uh, example of this uh, utilization when um, if you have created a uh, corrugated graphene surface, um, chemical activity of different place is changed, maximal chemical activity observed for uh, maximum of, of strain, and uh, uh, is allowed to um, Adsor leads to adsorption of atom on a particle, uh, namely in the part with maximum strain. And uh, you can, as a result, you can uh, create uh, some superlatives uh, when properties of functionalized part of graphene leads to formation of potential barrier or opening pen gap in this place. For example, if you have uh, absorbed the oxygen, hydrogen, fluorine atom, you will obtain the line with a large pen gap in graphene, and uh, then observe, uh, you will obtain some conductive line between these areas. So you have obtained uh, an endless superstructure. Uh, the similar situation uh, can be observed in the case when uh, corrugation uh, have a more complicated, uh, more complicated uh, design. Uh, so in all cases, uh, you have a very uh, interesting approach for modification of properties of graphene. Another uh, example of how uh, strain can be modified, uh, tunneling can be modified, tunneling resistance of monolayer of molybdenum sulfate. In this case, we use conductive uh, substrate uh, with uh, monolayer of molybdenum sulfate and the application of pressure with use of atomic force microscopy probe uh, strongly change the resistance strongly change the tunnel and current, uh, which correspond to change in resistor of this uh, potential barrier. Uh, pressure was tra uh, transferred to the effective thickness of barrier, and as you can see, uh, the uh, change in the thickness leads to the uh, strong effect uh, with the point of view of the resistivity of this. Resistance. One more very popular direction uh, of the application of strain is the introduction of pseudomagnetic field, uh, fields in graphene. It was found that application of uniaxial tensile strain led to appearance of cyclotron orbit uh, of the carriers and uh, which lead to appearance of uh, oscillation of local density of state. The similar effects are observed uh, in the case on application of magnetic field. And uh, so uh, appearance of this uh, oscillation of uh, density of state was interpreted interpreted as uh, introduction of pseudomagnetic field in uh, uh, graphene materials. This uh, effect was widely used for different uh, analysis of different uh, observed effects and for different applications. Here you can see the result when uh, belay structure was created with use of some twisting of monolayers. And um, uh, in this structure was uh, form some folds, these values. And when you're using the atomic uh, 
for spectroscopy probe. You have measured differential conductivity in the places without strain and in strain areas in the fold. Uh, you can observe very different characteristics. This uh, characteristic is correspond to unstrained part of materials, and uh, this one uh, to the strain part. Um, this uh, characteristic is uh, uh, correspond to formation of band gap. This uh, band gap value. Uh, in the strain areas and the appearance of uh, observation of Landau levels in the large pseudomagnetic film. Uh, you can cre create more complicated getter structure. It is possible not used only twisted monolayer uh, and form uh, the super lattice like given in this figure, but if you have uh, Tensile one of the monolayer, what the one monolayer is uh, have the uh, without any strain, and the uh, top monolayer is tensile. Uh, you can see that super is strongly changed, and uh, the conduct uh, conductance of the structure also modulated. And uh, you can observe the uh, system of peak near the neutrality point. Uh, the origin of these peaks is not clear yet, but uh, possibility to strongly modify properties of the structure is demonstrated. Another possibility uh, of uh, strain in getter structures is the uh, possibility to split the monolayers in a CVD grown getter structure. In this case, uh, we have observed uh, two monolayers of the hard beginnings of transitional metal, and uh, Raman analyzing of uh, for this getter structure under the tensile. Uh, lead to some jump in position of uh, Raman peak. And uh, as it is uh, demonstrated uh, with use of microscopy, this jump correspond to uh, this jump correspond to splitting of monolayer. It's also it demonstrates the first of all the weak uh, interaction between these layers. And another uh, important point is that you can take the up, uh, top monolayer and transfer it to another substrate. And the last example uh, responded to the change of mechanical properties of monolays in getter structure. One of the problems of uh, transition. Uh, the hard cutting in the transient metals is relatively poor mechanical properties in comparison with graphene. And if you have create getter structure graphene with, uh, in this case, molybdenum sulfur, in different combination, it was found that mechanical, all mechanical parameters measure, measured for this getter structure is uh, strongly improved. So using of uh, using of uh, getter structure with graphene allow to improve the uh, uh, hardness of transient metal for real the application. And now I'd like to summarize my talk. So strintronic is the most mostly developed uh, areas of non-electronic nowadays, and can be used as the platform for. Uh, development new materials new, and new design for uh, flexible electronics and uh, application of deformation can lead to surprising changes in the electronic properties of two dimensional materials and unexpected technological and engineering solutions. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much for your nice report.
Now section is open for uh, questions and discussion. Are there any questions? Um, maybe I understand not correct, but um, you have very excellent review of uh, material and so on. But question is, does your department have some resources to create, you know, for example, new transistor? We need some transistor very much, for example. Uh, we have no the goal to create, uh, namely, a transistor for application, but for, uh, in our laboratory, we deal with uh, creation of um, res uh, memristors based on the utilization of nanoparticle covered with uh, um, Okay, very interesting. And what is the size of your memristor and how many you can... It's very important for us to... Size of memristor. Mm -hmm. you size of memristor, uh, the size of the nanoparticle of uh, vanadium oxide is uh, about uh, five, seven nanometers. These particles are covered with uh, fluorinated graphene with thickness about... Uh, one, one and a half nanometer. So the, uh, it's minimal size. And uh, these nanoparticles also demonstrated the resistive switching. But if we have created monolayer from uh, monolayer or some uh, uh, layer with thickness uh, maybe 20, 30 nanometers, we observe the record uh, switching with the relation between on and off uh, current nine orders of magnitude. It's very uh, higher relation. And you have experimental uh, examples of such memristor and so on. And, yeah. no, I have many questions, maybe later I will ask. Okay. Yeah, sure. Are there any other questions? Uh, thank you for, uh, very much for uh, this uh, very interesting review. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first, uh, maybe I uh, have uh, uh, missed it, but uh, uh, is your uh, memory stars uh, uh, non-volatile or volatile? No, no. No, non-volatile. Okay, and the second question, is it uh, possible to have a multi-level switching in such memory stars? Don't observe most of the switching, but uh, I think that it's uh, possible if you will create uh, some, use some nanoparticle with uh, different parameters. We did not uh, create something. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, thank but you. In this, but in this study, we, uh, in this uh, presentation, I did not uh, say nothing about it. <laughs> Uh, okay, if you allow me one more uh, one more okay. question, uh, how uh, scalable is this technology? How uh, far uh, uh, how far can you uh, scale it down? What technology you speak about? Uh, the memory stores uh, based ah, on strengthening. Like yes. Okay. Uh, I already said that minimal size of uh, memory stores is uh, the size of the particle five seven nanometers. Thank you. Are there any other questions? No questions. No, let's thank the speaker again. And now we come to regular talks. The first talk will be uh, done by uh, Igor Punkov from Moscow. Requirements to materials for 3, 5D, 6G mobile communication system. So um, my report will in include uh, really three parts. No, um, maybe later I will add one more, but this is uh, first of all uh, high efficiency transistor for power amplifier, which we use very, very effective. And 
material for antenna and filter and material for optic. And we will be very happy if you will uh, fulfill such um, present <laughs> as such some material. Mm. No, first of all, uh, I'd like to speak about, sorry, sorry, uh, speak about um, high efficiency transistor for uh, our base station, station uh, which used in, in power amplifier. <clears throat> no, you see, we have uh, three type of, uh, of base station. Macro base station, 5G, maybe you will switch off uh, power because uh, switch off slide, slide show. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, high efficiency transistor for micro base station, uh, 5G and uh, MIMO. Mm -hmm. Uh, changed only by maximum power of, uh, of transistor. For macro base station, we need mm, the, uh, switch of uh, <laughs> slide so. regime, please. Okay. <clears throat> and. Uh, <clears throat> and you see, I understand. I understand. We, like user, speak uh, in, with uh, your uh, material designer in different lang language. I understand, if of course. But um, no, our requirements like this. We need uh, output power of our transistor, number of bands in which we will work, bandwidth of uh, transistor, common bandwidth of uh, transistor and power amplifier, efficiency of uh, power amplifier with for um, very big changing signal. This, this is peak to average uh, um, ratio. Uh, it on, on it depend uh, quality and uh, quantity of information we will we transmit and uh, efficiency of this transistor and power amplifier this is one of the main problem for us. Uh, no, yesterday I already said that first transistor have efficient first power amplifier have tran efficiency like five percent now it's uh, five, 55 55 percent and uh, not only for one band but for three bands three bands it means that uh, your mobile can work in uh, three different uh, carrier frequency and, uh, and receive in no, approximately, approximately, but maybe much more when in free time more information, which of course uh, need for everybody. And uh, so, mm -hmm. теперь она перестала переключаться. <coughs> <clears throat> uh, 
but uh, at the same time, you see, we uh, don't need uh, we don't need uh, linearity of transistor. Uh, we don't require it because we can correct it ourselves. So it's much more easy for you. Uh, and here it is requirement for no transistor which we need. Uh, maybe for you will be interesting some new structure, but uh, which was designed no last last year, and uh, we can uh, illustrate it here. And maybe it can help you design some new transistor. Next is material for antenna and filter. Uh, here it is, first of all, requirements for uh, high power uh, thermal uh, things. And uh, here I will include some parameters which we need for it. And <coughs> okay. Uh, for thermal requirements for thermal and uh, here it is main is low very small losses of uh, material maybe from uh, polymer material I don't know but if it will be some nanomaterial we are not against uh, next with uh, polymetal material again with power and thermal, oh, sorry, broadband design and couple double frequency. You see, uh, maybe you can create uh, some material, no, you know that uh, frequency of antenna uh, depends on its size. And if you can create uh, material with uh, lambda, like this, it, it means when we can uh, make, we can make uh, antenna with one size for very different, uh, uh, okay, <clears throat> very different frequency. Uh, next, weight reduction of um, tower for our equipment is very important too. Uh, and our problem, this is passive intermodulation uh, uh, suppression. Uh, you know that um, because of high power of base station, the distortion from transistor come to, uh, come to receive part. And we need uh, some material which uh, absorb this distortion very much. And we already have experience when, uh, when one film, American film, designed such uh, color and give us screw which we include in our base station, but unfortunately, um, it doesn't work at all. Um, so if you can design it, it will, it will be very important for us. No, uh, and now uh, this is very interesting maybe, but fantastic project for control angle by, um, okay, semiconductivity, if you can super, uh, <laughs> Super material, it will be very good. Novel material for optic. No, and thank you if you will have some problem. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker. And now, please, questions. If you have any questions, please ask. Mm -hmm. okay. When you have tell us about the transistor, you have demonstrated the using of molybdenum sulfur as the material for transistor. This By is like example, yes. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, this material has very low carrier mobility and 
transistor will be have low operated frequency. Why you have uh, made accent? On this is material? only example. You you see uh, for us. Uh, I already write here uh, our um, our requirements, and you see uh, carrier of carrier is like one eight gigahertz to point uh, six and so on. I am not specialist in material at all. You are specialist, and we uh, ask you such parameters. So. I think that uh, this frequency is observed for another kind of material. Okay, okay. <laughs> you are a specialist in this. Please design for us such transistor, okay? Yes. So, hello, thank you for your presentation. Um, well, you showed that there are a lot of new materials for novel application, transistor, optical, and so on. So how do you think, how long does it take to switch from standard silicon uh, technology for some new kind of technology? How long does it take, like five, 10 years, or we never change, we never go through silicon mm, technology? You see, it's difficult, very, very difficult questions, really. Mm. Now, in for uh, high power uh, transistors, uh, as I know, uh, now Huawei used gun transistor, and it's much more effective. But about silicon, I don't believe that, for example, graphene or another, um, another technology can uh, fight and can be better than silicon. But once more, I am not specialist in material. Uh, for me, need transistor, amplifier, <laughs> and uh, good ASIC of high technology. So I think that's, that's right. time is over for questions. Let's thank the speaker again. Okay. Now I invite next reporter. This is Ilya Nilubin from Zelenograd with the top development of the dispersion genetic model of MOSFET gauge structure for production in line controlled by means of optical spectrometry. Good day, dear colleagues. The topic of my speech were announced. As you know, one of the main semiconductor devices, the MOS transistor, throughout the history of development of microelectronics has been continuously improved. The geometrical size are reduced and the design of such devices is becoming more complex. The control of technological process for manufacturers these devices is also becoming more difficult. At uh, 130 nanometers technology node, uh, aspect ratio gaze thickness and uh, two length is became close to one to one. For this, uh, one a change one degree of sidewall tilt angle of gate will lead to a change at the absurd measured sides at the top and bottom gate size by more than 10 percent. And it's obviously that we, it's necessary to control the full three-dimensional profiles of transistors and know where do we measure critical dimensions. At present, uh, for measurement of critical dimensions, due to is time effective, non-destructive, and, uh, and relatively simple equipment. Uh, opt uh, the method of optical scatterometry is applied on in the micro world microelectronic industries. This method, based on the analysis of light, 
scattered for, for uh, periodic array and allow to reassemble the three-dimensional profiles of study structures. For solving of inverse problem of optical scattermetry, we need with high accuracy to know the dispersion model of for all sample materials and sample ge as well as sample geometry, which is the main problems in the development of measurement technique. In this regard, the following task for our work was set to develop a dispersion and geometrical model for gate assembly structures and to assess the ability to control additional geometric parameters such as uh, gate and sidewalls. The technological process of gate structures is presented on the slides briefly. The measurement of critical dimensions were carried out by optical scatterometry and by scanning electron microscopy for comparison and analysis. But that is the other physical different structures were measured. Uh, in our case, the, one, the main problem in modeling of these structures was ga polysilicon gate interface layer, which represented as a complex layer with roughness. What can be seen from corresponding scanning electron microscopy image. For this, to, for calculation uh, dispersion dependencies for these materials, we used uh, Brueggemann approximation, where we assumed the A and B components is polysilicon and air res respectively. Uh, on this slide presented the geometrical models for gate structures, parameters of structures and corresponding scanning electron microscopy image on cross section. Similarly model for sidewall one structures is presented. The shape of uh, first spacers was modeled as an ellipse form. And uh, finally, similar model for sidewall two structures is presented on this slide. The shape of second spa spacers is similar model as an ellipse form. This, the measurement result is presented on this slide in table. Inform the average values plus minus standard deviation or sigma. It can be seen that uh, the value of sigma obtained by optical scattermetry is lower than similar value obtained by scanning electron microscopy. And also we see that uh, optical scattermetry make it possible to control additional geometrical parameters of gate structures such as uh, gate uh, sidewall tilt angels width and height, which cannot be measured by scanning electron microscopy. But for example, on height of the first sidewall, we obtained uh, high values of sigma. And in the future, we will need to more accurately profile describe and uh, take into account uh, various etching effects for formation first and second spacers. The main conclusion of our work is presented on the slide. The method of optical scatterometry can be applied only for measurement only periodic structures, but due to the fact that uh, its non-destructive characters and no vacuum, high voltage sources and electronic column needed for scatterometry equipment. This method is cheaper and less complex than scanning electron microscopy and can be applied for production environment 
and measurement technique. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's thank the speakers. So, please, your questions to the reporter. I'm not uh, quite with you, but uh, I, I didn't understand such things. You use Brugeman approximation, which doesn't include any structural parameters. And as uh, you showed, finally, you receive some structural parameters. The question is how the electric function includes these structural parameters. Uh, the effective value of dielectric constant, we assumed, uh, to modeling the Brugeman approximation. And for other layer structures, we used um, uh, standard uh, values, um, which is known from literature. So and uh, for polysilicon uh, bulk, and uh, top interface layer we modeled uh, separately for uh, as a true layer separately. Maybe for understanding, excuse me. Um, so you showed this formula. You have epsilon, uh, epsilon b. Yeah? So then finally you showed the table where the structural parameters are. So now where is this connection between uh, the electric function and these parameters? they are related to each other. Mm. To obtain accurate results of measurement, mm, we need to uh, present the dielectric function mm, more and more accurate and uh, mm, if we don't know with high, high accuracy uh, dielectric constant, we don't, um, we cannot obtain the measurement results with, with this accuracy. Sorry, please. Also, I want to ask you, you don't uh, show us any other equations. You tell that you use, use different geometrical models. So where are here? your report. So you try to simulate this situation with different geometry. Yes? Mm, yes. So, and you don't show us the equations that you use in your model. Because mm. this uh, first equation I, is not everything. You can't obtain from Brugeman mm, mm -hmm. these parameters. That was I, I understand, but I don't present it in this presentation. Uh, I only uh, presented uh, which parameters in uh, was be floated in model event and fixed floated parameters was uh, thickness of gate sidewall angel the form of sidewall width and height of sidewall for one and two sidewalls so are there any other questions please Thank you for your report. Uh, you show us uh, technology with uh, 250 nanometers. Uh, who is a consumer of this technology? I know that uh, Micron has uh, lower node technologies. And uh, what uh, factory will use uh, this technology mm -hmm. in the future? That this uh, structure was produced on our factory, microelectronic fab, the named NM Tech. It is a early named Angstrom T company. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes. So, no more questions. Now let's thank the speaker. We <laughs> have strict schedule, so we need to go to next report. That will be done by Vadim Kuznetsov from Novosibirsk Technical University. 
for the electromagnetic phenomena in N-type hydrargon carbon telluride heater structures. Please. You have five minutes, yes? Hello, I am Kuznetsov Vadim. I want to present to you our work uh, photoelectric phenomena in a magnetic field in N-type mercury cadmium telluride heterostructures. The uh, purpose of uh, our work uh, is to study the features of magnetic field dependencies of the photoelectromagnetic effect in N-type MCT films. This picture shown investigate uh, structures and uh, mercury cadmium telluride used to produce infrared photodetectors. And uh, these uh, photodetectors uh, can work in all infrared diapason. Uh, this slide shown measurement scheme. And electric field uh, is applied uh, between five and six contacts, a uh, whole signal is measured uh, between one and three contacts and uh, magneto resistance voltage measured between one and two contacts. Uh, this slide shown experimental and uh, theoretical dependencies. Uh, Magnetic resistance and whole effect. Such experimental dependencies are in good agreement with theory in the expression of two types charge carrier in sample. Parameter carrier shown in the uh, this slide demonstrate. Uh, uh, measurement uh, dependencies in uh, two different direct magnetic field. Uh, these dependencies for mag when magnetic field uh, in plane uh, sample and these dependencies when uh, magnetic field uh, perpendicular per of plane sample. Uh, on the left, uh, this slide are shown uh, measurement dependencies of photoconductivity and photomagnetic effect. Uh, this the sample resistance include in this signal, and uh, we should remove this unnecessary dependence. And we, after correcting, we have. The dependencies. In uh, literature, we found uh, a description of theory for P type MCT films sample. And uh, in this article, this article uh, was found what the measurement signal depends of two components. First component named uh, photoconductivity component, and two component, second component named uh, diffusion component. And our dependencies are uh, very similar to diffusion components. Here. Uh, it is necessary to obtain its mathematical description to determine the recombination diffusion parameters of sample. Uh, we should take uh, this expression and boundary conditions. As a result, uh, we, uh, we have a second order definitional equation. His solution looks like that. No conclusions. Is measurement dependencies of the photoelectromagnetic effect in N type MCT is similar to the diffusion components. Plans of development of theory for the conductivity in M type MCT film films. Thank you very much for your report.
So please, questions. Are there any questions? So thank you for your report. Um, I have a question. Uh, as I know, cadmium, um, cadmium structural material can be a topological insulator if its value reach critical. It's if if its thickness reach critical value. So what thickness in your experiment was? Uh, about uh, seven or ten micrometer. Okay, so it's enough. And uh, can you explain when you showed uh, some figures? Can you explain uh, non-symmetry of it? Non-symmetry of what? Non-symmetry of dependence. Uh, the next one, yes. So the right in the. Uh, mm, this is. So. As I see, you applied magnetic field, yes, and you measured... Uh, Photoconductivity signal measured. Symmetric. Yes. It's not symmetric. Yeah, it's, as I see, it's not uh, non-symmetry. Non Can you explain why? Maybe, I don't know. I'm not a specialist in it. No, it is a... No, it's feature for this material and type this material, and uh, it is our future plans uh, create uh, description. Yes. Okay, yeah, thank you. And last question: you um, you obtained some mathematical uh, formula in the end of your presentation. You showed us, and how you applied it, and what is the need of obtaining this formula. The last one, I think, where you obtained the density or what? Why? What, uh, what do you going to do with this formula? Are you going to prove your experiments or what? Uh, this is theory, theory dependencies, and we. Sorry, just so it just fundamentally just. Yes, it okay. is fundamentally. So. What do you want to determine from this formula? Why do you need this formula? Uh, for de no, for determine recombination diffusion parameters material, it is mobility, diffusion length, recombination lifetime in this material. And are there any results? Can you say something about these parameters now? Uh, no, it is future. Okay. No questions, yes? They see. Thank you very much again. And now, next talk will be done by uh, Yuri Kuznetsov, the thermoelectric properties of nanostructures silicon germanium phosphorus doped by spark plasma sintering. Please, it's from, uh, from Nizhny Novgorod. Ah, Daniel Klasovsky. Sorry, please. Klasovsky, yes? Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Indium arsenide <laughs> island formation on the indium phosphorus 11001 uh, during high temperature annealing in an arsenic flux. Daniel Klasovsky, Institute of Semiconductor Physics. Good afternoon. My report is developed to a study of indium arsenic islands formation on the indium phosphate surface, surface during high temperature annealing. Indium substrates are used to create heterostructures on the basis of which transistors, LEDs and lasers and electro-optical modulators are made. The growth of heterostructures begin with the removal of the substrate amorphous oxide layer. For indium phosphate, substrate, it's usually removed by high temperature annealing in an arsenic flux. However, this method has two problems. The first problem is the change in the chemical composition of the substrate surface. And indium uh, phosphate arsenic solid solution forms on the surface. The latest constant 
of which depends on the annealing temperature. The second problem is the formation of indium arsenic islands. Uh, the lattice mismatch between indium arsenic and indium phosphide is large enough and leads to the appearance of mechanical stresses and defects. To solve this problem, it's necessary to understand the cause of the indium arsenic islands formation. So the purpose of this work is to study the process of indium arsenic island formation. We used uh, commercially available indium phosphate substrates. Annealing of the samples was complete by holding for two minutes in an arsenic flux after the formation of the four cross two reconstruction. The four cross two reconstruction uh, indicated at atomically clear surface and two minutes is a typical transition time between the annealing process and the growth process. The island were observed in all cases and the density of the islands and the night increase uh, annealing temperature. A careful analysis of IFM images shows what the difference in the heights between the left and right profile paths is equal to the step height. This slide shows the mechanism of the oxide layer removal. Initially, the indie step is covered with the oxide layer. Removal of the oxide layer begins at the H steps. Uh, because oxide atoms at the edge have a smallest number of uh, nearest neighbors. After removal the oxygen layer, phosphorus desorption begins. Uh, phosphorus is um, replaced by arsenic and indium segregation occurs. The indium atoms form it on the lower terrace uh, and incorporated into the step. The indium atoms form it on the upper terrace cannot descend on the lower terrace and integrate into the step uh, because of the Schwebel barrier. Uh, so they form a monolayer on the upper terrace, which was experimentally, uh, which was experimentally observed. So a step uh, indium arsenic is formed. Future removal of the oxide layer leads uh, to the indium arsenic step movement along, uh, along the di directional 1 minus 1, 0. Also, in this case, phosphorus desorption and its replacement by arsenic occurs, which leads to increase in the depth of the phosphorus replacement by arsenic and, as a consequence, to an increase in the thickness of the indium arsenic area. Considering the critical thickness of the indium arsenic area will lead to a transition from two-dimensional growth to a formation of a three-dimensional island. This model qualitatively describes the observed dependence. The increase in the density and height of the islands is a site with an increase in indium due to which they are formed. A large amount of the indium on the surface leads to a large nucleation centers of indium arsenic islands. It uh, also enlarges the uh, lateral area of the indium arsenic with a critical thickness. A large area will result a more material what uh, the island will take from the area to grow up for. The main result of my report are shown on the slide. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Please, questions? So uh, I have a couple of questions, actually. Uh, normally, uh, first of all, what is the uh, latest mismatch between indium uh, arsenide and indium, uh, indium arsenide and indium phosphide? Uh, 3.2%. Okay, so it's suitable for uh, mechanism of Stransky-Krastanov growth. Uh, 
Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Uh, then the question. So you you showed that uh, this is me mechanism of the growth of Indian uh, Asenai Islands is quite different from uh, Stransky Krastanov growth. The question is: so why do you, do you think so? First of all, and why you do not use Stransky Krastanov growth mode? Okay, thank you for this interesting question. First of all, in the Stransky Krastanov mechanism. A datum uh, uh, go up from molecular uh, uh, from uh, molecular источник source source so, so, uh, on um, the surface. But in our situation, a datums go up uh, into substrate, so we don't. Uh, um, uh, they don't um, grow for standard mechanism because how I said uh, Schwebel barrier. But uh, this mechanism and mechanism of Stransky Krastanov have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of have a, a, a lot of uh, hmm? oh, don't. homes, homes, yeah, homes. And uh, if um, we uh, set, um, finish it up, uh, we can say that uh, it's uh, practically Stransky Krastanov mechanism. And, uh, this is right. Uh, hello, thank you for your presentation. Um, if I understand right, uh, the nucleation points is uh, steps yeah. where oxide breaks first and uh, uh, growth starts. Uh, so uh, steps is uh, in fact two-dimensional uh, thing. It's not a point, it's a line. Uh, uh, so um, uh, is um, your islands must... Um, how your islands are lined along this line? Is there any um, crystallographic uh, lines preferred? Uh, okay, uh, the lateral size of uh, Indian arsenic islands 100 nanometers along uh, one minus one zero direction. Ah, okay. And uh, if uh, we can see another direction, one. One zero, its uh, lateral size about uh, uh, 16, 17 nanometers. Okay, thank you. And is there any um, period periodicity of these islands? Uh, we don't uh, have uh, this information. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So oh, thank you for your presentation. I have a question. Uh, maybe I misunderstand, but uh, is it possible to to island form not on the edge of step, but to land on like in the middle of theorists and form like an island not on the step, but in the middle of theorists? Um, so if I can understand question, uh, we first etap of growth in the Masonic Islands in the step. Uh, when when um, the oxid layer will removed, we have that some in the Masonic Island uh, will be on the terrace. Some and uh, in the Masonic Islands will how cut um, Step how in in no in terrace. The same. It's only initial part part of the growth. Mm -hmm.
dear colleagues, my name is uh, Yuri Kuznetsov and first of all I would like to thank the organized committee for, for the opportunity to present the report the thermoelectric properties of nanostructure silicon germanium phosphorus doped by spark plasma sintering. Uh, all over the world active development of alternative uh, energy sources. Uh, one of these areas is the Zeebeck effect, the phenomenon of an electric voltage appearances in a material which sites are at the different temperatures. Okay. To achieve high values coefficient of the efficiency or figure of merit ZT, the thermoelectric must have high Zeebeck coefficient and uh, electrical conductivity and also thermoelectric must have low coefficient of thermal conductivity. For example, dielectric have high uh, Zeebeck effect uh, coefficient, but low electrical conductivity. And metal have uh, high electrical conductivity, but low Zeebeck coefficient. The option uh, ratio of these parameters is observed in heavily doped semiconductors. One of the best uh, material for thermoelectricity is uh, silicon germanium. The main advantages of silicon germanium are simple fast diagram. Silicon and germanium are environmentally friendly raw materials and variation on physical properties of a wide range due to change in composition. For example, uh, kremni or oh, silicon uh, have uh, Thermal conductivity is uh, 140, uh, or uh, germanium have uh, 16 uh, watt Kelvin meters, but uh, silicon germanium uh, have uh, thermal conductivity uh, 11 or 20. Sintering this material from uh, uh, from a powder mixture by spark plasma sinking method can reduce the coefficient of thermal conductivity. The dopant is uh, phosphorus silicate, which is a main feature of this work, because phosphorus, when combined with silicon, is not dangerous. A series of structure was prepared for the study, in which the heating rate and the maximum temperature of the sintering uh, were varied. Of particular interest is structure for uh, which is a, an analog of structure 2, but with a 30 minute annealing after the sintering process. For the nature of the temperature dependence of the resistance, it, show, it follows that the samples have a metallic character of conductivity due to the high level of doping of the material. The lowest resistance was recorded for structure 3, with heating rate was the lowest. The largest resistance is demonstrated by structure 4. We think that annealing could lead to phosphorus clustering. The largest value of the ZB coefficient was obtained for structure 4. We think that features of the ZB coefficient behavior can be explained by the presence of several silicon germanium phases in the samples and prolonged high temperature annealing leads to a system to a state of thermodynamic equilibrium with the formation of a single phase system with stable thermoelectric parameters. The temperature dependence of the thermal conductivity coefficient was also a measurement and the typical values is 5 or 4 watt Kelvin meters. And uh, the thermoelectric figure of merit was calculated and the highest value was uh, 0 0.52. Conclusion. A new method for the spark plasma sintering fabrication of doped nanostructures thermoelectric materials based on a solution, solid solution silicon germanium phosphorus was shown. The development of phosphorus doping techniques makes it possible to simplify the operation with the initial powders. The dependence of the structure thermoelectric properties on the sintering parameters was investigated. It was shown that the sintering rate affects the resistivity of the fabrication structure. 
a weak influence on the sintering rate on the ZB coefficient and SS consequences on the power factor has been demonstrated. Thanks for attention. So please, your questions for the reporter. Okay. Ask you just a question for understanding. You said in the beginning of your talk that uh, phosphorus, when it is diluted in uh, silicon germanium, it's not dangerous. So, what can be dangerous actually? What kind of materials can be dangerous for, for any application if you are working with silicon? Thanks. Uh, thanks for your very interesting questions. Uh, I uh, I mean that uh, dangerous is a uh, clean uh, powder of phosphorus. We use uh, powder silicon phosphorus for doping silicon germania. Uh, so what do you mean? Я просто не знаю, как это сказать. То есть мы легируем не чисто фосфор. Yeah, try, try to speak English. А, окей. Okay. Uh, help you. We doped silicon Germany, uh, not phosphorus. Uh, By using this mixture. We use uh, phosphorus silicate. Yes, yes. CP. And so the question was why it can be Maybe. dangerous when you it. It means if you will ah. take pure phosphorus, it mm -hmm. can be more dangerous or not? For health or for oh, oh. the device. What ah, oh, oh, excuse me. Okay, I understand. Uh, for health, yeah, for health, uh, dangerous for health. Ah, for health. So stringent requirements, yes, safety regulation requirements. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So. Uh, maybe I missed it by uh, what was the exact composition of silicon and germanium? X in your experiment. Uh, what? Uh, um, composition between uh, silicon and germanium. Uh, we, um, this is, um, uh, your material is silicon one, Minus six and ah, germanium X. Okay. X. What is X? Uh, we use uh, silicon uh, uh, zero uh, seven germanium zero three because this uh, composition have uh, the uh, the um, lower uh, coefficient of thermal conductivity. Okay and. Uh, What's the form of your material? It's polycrystallic film or it's uh, crystallic? Um... Uh, this is a very interesting question because I must create special slide about it. Uh, uh, this uh, structure is uh, uh, polycrystallic uh, grain st structure have many uh, grants with um, crystals, yes. Uh, of uh, grains. Uh, this is um, ceramics. Okay. Ceramics. And what's uh, the uh, thickness of the film? Uh, these samples have uh, uh, two millimeters thickness uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, maybe you interest the size of grain over uh, 300 uh, nanometers. Okay, thank you. So, no other questions? Thank you very much. Again. And now the next report will be done by Mikhail Fedotov from Moscow. Uh, experimental and theoretical study of intrinsic variability in hafnium oxide based RAM. Uh, good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, uh, the topic of my talk today is the experimental and theoretical study of hafnium oxide based resistive RAM. Um, 
one of the most promising candidates uh, for the universal memory that combines high performance, uh, large number of reprogramming cycles, low power consumption and uh, high information capacity is resistive random access memory, or in short, uh, RERAM. This simple two-terminal memory device is based on the reversible transition of uh, a thin dielectric film uh, from uh, a high resistance to low resistance state and back when the polarity of uh, applied voltage is changed. Uh, this resistive state uh, trans uh, transitions can be achieved by uh, formation uh, and growth and disruption of uh, conductive filament uh, through an insulating layer, a thin, uh, uh, th thin thread uh, that uh, consists of uh, oxygen vac uh, of, uh, vacancies of oxygen, uh, in particular in uh, the transition uh, uh, transitional metal uh, oxides. Uh, uh, resistive RAM demonstrates fast switching, good scalability, and low power consumption, which makes it a, a promising candidate uh, for prospective non-volatile memory. And uh, its potential multi-level switching also makes it a promising candidate uh, for uh, applications uh, for uh, uh, neuromorphic computing. But despite uh, the significant progress in the development of resistive memory, a number of uh, unsolved problems limits its practical use. Uh, the most important limiting factor is uh, the low cycle-to-cycle uh, -cycle repeatability of the key switching parameters, such as switching voltages and, uh, res and uh, resistances uh, in uh, high-resistive and low-resistive states. Uh, on this slide, you can see an, an, an IV characteristic of a single RERAM cell uh, during, uh, uh, during subsequent uh, 50 switching cycles, which demonstrates a significant volatility of uh, set and uh, reset voltages, as well uh, as uh, current in the, in the high resistive state. Uh, although intrinsic cycle-to-cycle uh, -cycle variability of RAM uh, has been a subject for an, uh, of an intensive experimental and uh, theoretical research, uh, an operative mechanism of such uh, variability is not yet fully understood. Uh, so uh, uh, the purpose of uh, my work uh, is the following. Are the following, sorry. Uh, conduct an, an experimental study of intrinsic variability of a hafnium oxide based RAM. Uh, propose a physical explanation of such variability and create uh, on its basis an analytical model of resistive switching. Uh, according to the model, simulate the switching parameters behavior and uh, compare uh, the simulation results to experimental data. Uh, and based on the achieved results, uh, to propose the means of elimination uh, or reducing uh, the, intrinsic, the intrinsic variability in RAM cell. Uh, the first part of my work is experimental one. Uh, the measurements of the direct current switching characteristics and statistical analysis of the intrinsic variability of the half oxide based RAM were carried out during, uh, using one transistor, one resistor structure uh, that consists of one RAM cell and one transistor. Uh, the RAM cell was in series uh, with a, a metal with a MOS transistor uh, controlling the maximum current during the set operation. Uh, the RERAM device consists of a 10 nanometer thick uh, half oxide layer formed by atomic layer deposition and uh, 8 nanometer thick titanium layer sputtered by physical vapor deposition uh, to provide excess of oxygen vacancies near the top electrode. Uh, both top and bottom electrodes were made uh, by a sputtering of uh, uh, titan uh, nitride by uh, physical vapor deposition. The area of RAM cells uh, used in our experiments uh, uh, was uh, four square microns. Uh, one randomly uh, selected uh, uh, device uh, was, uh, uh, was subjected to a series of uh, 50 cycle, uh, cycles at each uh, uh, measurement conditions that included uh, five values of uh, maximum voltage in, uh, in the uh, reset mode ranging from minus uh, 0 0.9 to minus 1.7 volts and uh, three values uh, of the maximum current in the set mode, of uh, eight um, um, microamperes, 18 and uh, 30. Uh, 
Uh, thus, uh, the same device uh, was measured 50 times at each of 30, uh, at, at each of uh, 15 uh, different measurement conditions. Uh, on this slide, you can see the switching IV characteristics of uh, our 1T1R structure measured at a low compliance current of 8 microamperes and uh, uh, different reset uh, stop voltages. And if we uh, convert this data to uh, the resistance, it looks like this. Uh, on this slide, uh, you can see uh, the uh, low resistance state uh, uh, in in blue and uh, uh, high uh, resistance state in uh, various colors uh, representing each uh, reset stop voltage. Uh, and uh, for each uh, set of parameters, uh, as I said, uh, 50 measurements uh, were carried out. Uh, the, left, uh, uh, the left picture is uh, for the current compliance of uh, eight microamperes the middle for 18 and uh, the right for 30. Uh, the presented data reveal some clear trends. First, the uh, high resistance state current increases with the decreasing reset stop voltage. Uh, and thus, uh, we can achieve uh, multi-level switching by controlling the reset stop voltage. Uh, second, the uh, set voltage for, uh, 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 for high resistance to low resistance transition uh, decreases with uh, uh, decreasing reset stop voltage. Uh, this is uh, also uh, this also helps to achieve uh, multi levels uh, multi level switching. And uh, the third, uh, the low resistance uh, uh, the low uh, uh, the low resistance state resistance uh, the lowest reset stop voltage of minus uh, zero point nine. Um, uh, microamperes and uh, the uh, lowest current compliance of 8 microamperes clearly shows a bimodal distribution. As you can see on the left picture, um, at, uh, at minus 0 0.9 volts, uh, the low resistance uh, state uh, resistance uh, suddenly increased after uh, about 25 cycles. Also, its uh, its median its median value has increased and its spread has increased. The reasons of such uh, uh, behavior will be uh, discussed a little bit later. Um, in addition to the clearly seen by model distribution, the low resistance state uh, resistance uh, uh, demonstrates the significant spread at the low reset stop voltage, as it can be seen. Uh, from the left figure, um, presenting um, the dependencies of the median and uh, standard deviation of the uh, low resistance state uh, resistance on the reset stop voltage and current compliance. Uh, and uh, the figures on the right present the same dependencies for the high resistance state. Uh, to give a physical explanation, of the experimentally established intrinsic variability trends. We uh, propose a, a hypothesis of uh, uh, multiple, conducting, uh, multiple conductive filaments uh, that participate in the process of resistance switching. Uh, today, the, the, dominate, uh, uh, the, the dominant uh, model of resistance switching implies that uh, there are only a single conductive filament uh, in the resistive uh, realm. Uh, but uh, the observed uh, bimodal distribution, uh, as well as uh, uh, some other uh, investigations that uh, were mentioned in uh, our article, uh, uh, shows that uh, uh, the, the, the multiple uh, uh, conduct filaments uh, may also be the case. <clears throat> Uh, these filaments can be caused by non-uniformity uh, non of the hafnium oxide film, uh, caused by the roughness uh, the metal electrode and uh, the metal electrode dielectric film uh, in, uh, interface, uh, as well as non-uniform uh, non distribution of the oxygen vacancies in the dielectric. Um, 
uh, the absorbed bimodal behavior of the low resistance state uh, may possibly be due to the impact of the secondary conductive filaments. However, their contribution to uh, the variability in low resistance state seems to be uh, negligibly low. Uh, this can be due to the rel uh, relatively small uh, length of the secondary conductive filament in comparison with the length of uh, the primary conductive filament. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, the, uh, though there can be uh, multiple conductive filaments, our model uh, implies uh, that uh, they can be uh, replaced for the sake of uh, simplifying the modeling uh, by a single secondary conductive filament, uh, which uh, has a, a a normal uh, length spread. Uh, the, the primary conductive filaments controls the low resistance state, which has a uh, uh, very low spread compared to the higher resistance state. Uh, so we can conclude that uh, its, uh, its length has uh, uh, zero spread. Our model assumes that the low resistance conductivity in the hafnium oxide films is caused by direct tunneling. This assumption relies on the, stage, uh, on the shape of uh, the calculated potential barrel, which is rectangular uh, for the voltages uh, used in the experiment. Uh, the maximum voltage during the reset motor uh, was uh, minus 1.7 volts, and the barrel height of uh, 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 titanium nitride uh, half oxide transition uh, is uh, 1.8 volts. So the barrier is, uh, remains to be rectangular at any used voltages. Uh, by uh, defining uh, the parameters uh, of both, for both uh, primary and secondary filaments, uh, the tunneling currents flowing through both of them uh, were calculated uh, using the following equation. One minute. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for, for, for the time, I'll, I'll try to be faster. Uh, uh, the, uh, compar uh, the, uh, and, uh, uh, using uh, the different uh, uh, parameters, uh, such as uh, filament length at, uh, and uh, filament uh, uh, thickness, uh, we uh, calculated the behavior of uh, um, High, high resistance and low uh, resistance uh, 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 of, of HRS and uh, LRS resistance states. Uh, and uh, on this slide, we can uh, see uh, its comparison with the experimental data. And we can see that uh, they correlate very well. Uh, also, uh, uh, we uh, measured uh, the HRS resistance dependence on the reset stop voltage and compared it with experiment, which also shows a uh, good correlation. And thus we can conclude that uh, the multiple conductive filaments uh, indeed can uh, contribute to the intrinsic variability in half oxide based RERAM. Uh, we also propose an uh, ultimate solution for this problem. Uh, we uh, can create a singular conductive filament uh, by implanting and uh, uh, by implanting charge defects into the dielectric itself, uh, which uh, will uh, help uh, the formation of a singular conductive filament. Uh, the improvement uh, of uh, the intrinsic variability uh, will uh, uh, will help to achieve uh, the reliable multi-level switching, uh, which uh, will be uh, which will have uh, a significant import importance. Uh, for the neuromorphic computing applications and the future non-volatile memory. Thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So. Yeah, thank you. So, as I said, in your structures there is a small conductive filaments and as i know um, there is an effect of filament forming so before your filament can act like uh, a bridge a conductive bridge you should form it like several times and based on your results that you showed us uh, where you show the on and off resistive 
a dependence from the cycle. I think that there is a forming effect in your structure that you should you should consider too. Uh, uh, the forming process was carried out before the measurements. We used all of the structures with already formed filaments. Okay. If you said that. Um, and the second question, can you show uh, the dependence of current versus voltage? Um, the first figure, I think. No. Uh, that one? So uh, the next one. Yeah, this one. So can you explain why there is a difference in jumps, in magnitude of jumps uh, from negative to positive resistance? So in the positive resistance or positive voltage region, there is only small jump in currents, and in negative region of voltage, there is a big current jump. Why it happens? Um, understand your question. Uh, the reason is that. Um, uh, the, the, the reason is that we uh, use higher reset voltages uh, and uh, uh, the threshold voltage between uh, uh, low resistance and uh, high resistance state is uh, subject to uh, a higher uh, uh, volatility uh, thanks to uh, the, the multiple filaments. Are you satisfied? Please. I have a couple of questions. You uh, said that you have hafnium suboxide. Do you know uh, anything about the stoichiometry of suboxide and which composition you have? This is the first question. Uh, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, the thing is that if you uh, use uh, stoichiometric uh, uh, hafnium oxide, which, uh, you will not uh, have a filamentary resistive switching. You, you have your oxide to be non-stoichiometric uh, uh, near one of the electrodes uh, to allow uh, the conductive filament uh, to form. The question is, do you know the X? Position. Uh, ah, ah, no, no, no. The second question is, you have shown that you uh, grew your structure uh, by using two techniques, atomic layer deposition and physical wafer deposition. So it means, does it mean that you transfer uh, your sample during growth from one chamber to other through the ambient atmosphere? Uh, I, I, uh, I wasn't uh, present at the fabrication of the device, uh, but uh, I think that was the case. Uh, of the parameters of fabrication, you no, mean? Uh, I mean, if you transfer the chamber uh, through the ambient atmosphere, yeah. can, it, can it influence on your uh, experimental results? Uh, I think not, because uh, we, uh, before our testing, uh, we uh, measured the, the, the characteristic of each cell, and the, the, the deviation was less than 5%. Uh, so, uh, I think that the possible the possible inaccuracies in manufacturing does not affect our cells to render our uh, experiment useless. Okay, thanks. And maybe uh, one more question. Uh, you, uh, when you spoke about um, uh, tunneling uh, uh, in your structure, you showed that you have some barrier mm -hmm. and uh, can you comment uh, how did you determine the shape of this barrier uh, we uh, assumed uh, that a conductive filament which consists of oxygen vacancies uh, is uh, a perfect uh, conductor for the sake of simplifying our modeling uh, and uh, we did not uh, uh, we did not include the uh, the influence of the image forces that could uh, uh, alter 
the, the shape barrier. The, the, the point was to establish if... Sorry, sorry. Uh, the question is why it has asymmetric shape. Ah, uh, because uh, of the applied voltage from, uh, the, from one of the electrodes. We have two electrodes. Uh, one electrode is grounded. It has uh, zero potential. And uh, to the other electrode, we apply a positive or negative voltage. There's one more question in the back of the hall. As I understand, you explain, you have explained the uh, strong variation of current in open state uh, with uh, increasing voltage uh, by the fact that the second uh, filament is formed. But according to percolation con theory of percolation conductivity, appearance of uh, first filament is strongly linked to increase the current. And uh, the next uh, conductive pass uh, will be very, very uh, weak effect on the conductivity. Uh, Why, in, in the uh, low, you explain more than one of the complications increases in current. Uh, if I understand your question correctly, uh, you mean that uh, the effect of the second conductive filament is uh, uh, negligibly uh, low compared to the primary one. Why this effect is uh, very pronounced? You can demonstrate the next. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. This one. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that uh, in uh, the lower. Uh, in, in the low resistance state, the barrier thickness between the primary electrode and uh, the bottom electrode uh, is uh, uh, less than one nanometer. And uh, the. Uh, and the barrier uh, thickness between uh, the uh, secondary filament uh, is uh, several times higher, uh, which is not the case uh, in the high resistance state when the length of both uh, filaments are comparable to each other. And uh, thus we can... But if you will have two filaments or more, you have obtained the uh, similar conductivity in uh, the resistance state, but not uh, one or the Hi. Uh, do, do you mean that uh, for each uh, voltage uh, I, we have the Only first filament is important. Uh, in in the low in, in the low resistance state, yes, but not in the high resistance state. The, in in high resistance state, uh, uh, the the. The very meaning of our model in the is that in the high resistance state, the length of both filaments became comparable. So it is not uh, easy to determine which one is even primary yeah, one. But, uh, the resistance state is also uh, very strongly uh, changed in your uh, system. Ah, uh, do you mean the change in the high? Uh, I, I don't uh, clearly understand the question. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I think one more question, no? Ah. Thank you for your report. And I have one question. Uh, are your memoristic devices forming or forming free? Uh, our uh, our uh, memoristic devices require forming, and they were formed uh, before the experiment. Uh, what? Uh, how forming? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, can you uh, ask uh, uh, magnitude of uh, your forming voltage of? Uh, Amplitude of uh, voltage of your forming process. As I recall, the voltage during the forming was uh, up to two volts, and the current compliance was uh, ten microamperes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I think that time is over for this report. And so now we can listen only one report before coffee break. So the last report in this session, I mean, before coffee break. Now, okay, the same speaker, the previous, and now 
The report will be done by Dmitry uh, Utkin from the Institute of Semiconductor Physics. Shapes of germanium and silicon particles created in silicon, silicon dioxide substrate by lift off techno technique. Please. Okay. Uh, a good day to all. Uh, the problem uh, of improving computational performance is widely recognized. As you know, there are two main methods of increasing productivity. <coughs> uh, firstly, is increasing count number of transistors and their flock frequency, and secondly, is uh, calculation, is parallelization of calculation. Uh, currently, both of these methods are losing their effectiveness <coughs> mainly due to heating effects. Uh, therefore, therefore, the idea of transition from electrical to optical signals was prophesied. Uh, thus, uh, global tasks uh, of light control at nanoscale eye rises. Uh, so, uh, photonics uh, has been actively involved in this problem in recent years. Part of photonics, plas part of photonics plasmonics что такое? <coughs> так. uh -huh. uh, part of plasmonics study the phenomena on surface installation uh, or plasmons and optical frequencies. Dielectric photonics has advantages our plasmonics. Uh, this is a <coughs> electric and magnetic field control. And uh, instead of metallic structures, dielectric photonic use of semiconductor structures as high reflective index N. Uh, for effective light control is required complete absorption by active layer and anti-reflecting coating help this. <coughs> uh, dielectric particles are a good alternative uh, to metal particles because uh, they are capable uh, <coughs> of generating optical resonance modes with lower dissipation losses. <coughs> uh, silicon and germanium <coughs> uh, for now high refractive index N. Uh, to create anti-reflection coatings uh, from dielectric particles on the substrate are used traditional methods of uh, micro nanotechnology and plasma etching. As well as chemical vapor deposition, laser uh, ablation on industry transfer, nano-imprint lithography and method based on uh, the wetting phenomenon. Mm, however, uh, these methods have disadvantages at the uh, need for reaching, using templates, high process temperature, chemical pollution, uh, lack of real control <coughs> the sites and positions. Uh, therefore, uh, we are development method um, <coughs> devoid of most of these listed disadvantages. And firstly, this step sample preparation, uh, then spin coating PMMA resist, uh, then uh, <coughs> explosion and EBM uh, lithography uh, develop, uh, <coughs> then vapor plating uh, silicon and germanium layers, and finally steps and uh, lift of technique. Uh, as a result, uh, we obtained a race of gear particle with a height of about 170 nanometers uh, and diameter in the base uh, 100, 200, 300 nanometers uh, located on the period on W diameters. Uh, <clears throat> the grayness of G is also noticeable, which indicates uh, polycrystalline structures and uh, these uh, particles. Uh, we also demonstrate uh, the possibility of obtaining a symmetrical particle shape uh, can be controller uh, uh, rotated the sample. Uh, in, th in this way, uh, using the technology we are developing, we can create coating from order on the Gilling C uh, particles uh, form of nano disk with diameter of uh, 100 to 400 nanometers. Uh, without itching uh, and uh, temperature process not exceeding 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, thank you for your attention.
Это вообще a lot. And uh, now you questions. It's a technical message. Uh, thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes, you we have a lot of time for questions. And have you any results that demonstrate and reflect the properties of your uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, we uh, measured uh, and reflection spectra, and this uh, you see a minimal uh, on uh, maximum absorptions uh, for uh, our, our particles of germanium and uh, natural experiments. Thank you. So, any other questions? Please. Dmitry, I have the question almost to the last slide. Uh, so, where you showed uh, the, uh, yes, this one, declined, declined cluster. So, if you have, uh, so, the substrate which is rotated to, uh, with respect to the uh, germanium saucer, I would expect that the uh, shape uh, should be regular, like that, and, but you, you have instead su su such a strange shape. So if you have point saucer, yeah, you should have parallel, you should have parallel uh, beam, yeah, and therefore I would say that all uh, clusters should be identical first and decline on the same angle, yes. like that. Why you have such a regular shape? Thanks. Uh, regular shapes uh, in a, uh, 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 we have uh, masks of resist, and uh, then uh, and then periodic and uh, required on lithography masks. Well, I I not uh, have this, uh, what's answer matter. What was the question? The question was that all, uh, all clusters should be declined identically. Yes, and they yes, have the like same. this one. Yeah. But if you look on uh, left hand side uh, structure, so one side of the cluster is declined and yes. another one is perpendicular. Why yes. is so? Yeah. I would expect that on no. the left hand side should be the same angle like from the no, no. Uh, it's right vertical and the other is determined by the shape of this mask. Uh, this uh, material is concentric and uh, side B um, uh, rotate. And uh, this uh, angle uh, constant. I don't translate in English. Um, So, uh, and uh, this and uh, normally uh, deposits this uh, um, uh, and mask of resist uh, have. Have, uh, have sides uh, uh, okay and these questions were transferred to uh, discussion or um, it's too difficult for you. yes uh, to explain yes in English yes uh, uh, so what kind of lithography did you use what kind what um, what type of lithography did you use? Ah, it's not in print lithography. It's electron beam lithography. Ah, electron beam. Electron okay, beam thank you. Scanning beam. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No? No, let's thank the speaker. The next, next talk will be done by Dmitry Patov from, from the Institute of Semiconductor Physics. Development on infrared scenes model in a wide wavelength range.
Good day, my dear colleagues. Today, I'm going to present you the results of development of infrared scene model in a wide wavelength range. Nowadays, machine vision systems are among the most significant robotic applications. And in order to achieve the maximum performance for such systems, they require the improvement of the next characteristics of photo detectors. Uh, we need to get a widest possible input dynamic range, as well as we can achieve signal latency, and uh, we may we need the ability to uh, watch our scene in several wavelengths, especially in infrared, because there are some applications that is heavy and dangerous for a human being. <clears throat> Uh, one of the most uh, effective ways to improve the first two characteristics is to use a different readout technique, also known as uh, dynamic vision sensor. In this kind of uh, readout technique, we, we output the scene observed as a stream of asynchronous events. Uh, every event contains only the information about a change in uh, incident intensity of a, on a sensor by a threshold value uh, instead of frame by frame static images. The second type of, uh, the second way to achieve the greater performance for such sensors is to use special differentiation as is implemented in our eyes. Uh, for example, a signal coming from an eye to our brain is a function of uh, a luminance difference between a certain peripheral part of uh, photosensitive retina and its center. So this uh, technique can, may, or can dramatically improve the input dynamic range, but often is a reason for visual illusions as shown this slide. <clears throat> so, we got the model of the sensor which outputs a stream of asynchronous events. And how do we uh, process it? And uh, luckily, we have a, a, uh, a kind of neural networks that is a very promising a class of neural networks that works with uh, simple events, also called spikes. We have an asynchronous stream of events. We inter interpret these events as uh, spikes, get it into the input data to the neural network. See, we got an uh, intellectual machine that is available to make environmental analysis. So we have a task to create a new kind of photo detector. We have a consumer of that data. So we need to complete some study, some research, and convey a number of model experiments with model of the such sensor. But if we wanted to develop a visible sensor with such techniques, we would just use any of those uh, render engines for visual scene simulations. But we want to create a new type of sensor that is available to see our scene in infrared, and there is no available tools that allows us to simulate the 3D scene to create an input data for such sensors. Unfortunately, we cannot use the uh, radio videos for such tasks because they already contain the limitations imposed by modern architecture of photo detectors. And now I'm going to present you the software tool that, is developed to, that was developed to tackle this problem. The software consists of the several parts, uh, scene, engine and a window. A window is responsible for uh, output, is responsible for outputting the results of simulation. The scene consists of an, several objects which where, uh, where the object have its own materials such as aluminum glass, etc. Uh, has its own temperature distribution uh, and uh, uh, position in the world space. Environment and optics are the limitations imposed on the resultant image that, is, that would be formed on the camera focal plane. The camera is a model of photo detector and it can be an, uh, visible or infrared. And the engine is a novel rendering 
engine uh, visualizer that was developed that was developed using uh, Vulkan API, and it used graphic processing units one of several to render the scene in the infrared wavelength. On this slide, an infrared simulation process steps are shown. At first, we prepare our 3D scene in any conventional 3D tools like Blender, Maya, Autodesk, and so on. After that, we load our 3D scene to the graphical processing unit in choosing models for atmosphere, optical system, and part detector, which we will simulate. Then, we set a wavelength range of interest. We set the low wavelength and high low wavelength and start simulation. The results of simulation is a series of um, points, is a series of images at uh, various points in the wavelength. In detail, this process is shown on this slide. As soon as we upload our data to graphic processing unit, we process it with the vertex shader to form the um, 3D scene itself. And if you want to look at our scene in visible range, we just pass the vertex data to fragment shader and have a good quality visual scene. But if you want to look at our scene in infrared, we estimate spectral radiance of several bodies on this scene at the given wavelengths, multiply by spectral gains value this result, apply atmosphere and optical system response, and get those pictures. On this slide, I show you several points for on 2, 5, 8, and 13 micrometers for a model of F16 uh, plane. After, uh, after estimation of those points, we just stamp them up and get the results. The results is presented as a intensity or intensities of incident radiation, uh, on local plane array picture. That's all. Thank you for all attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, questions? Are there any questions? Please. Maybe the last slide was not correctly illustrated. Please uh, show the last slide. Uh, yeah, this one. You have shown the different wavelengths, but the picture looks the same. Probably the screen uh, is slightly different. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's a it's a very um, difficult to show the differences in between some very close uh, gray values on the slide. I I haven't developed a visualizer to show these results in a color, so for now it looks like this. No. Anyway, we can see that uh, our point is mostly uh, hot, hot at the engine, uh, engine block. So at this wavelength, we only see this kind of this 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 uh, place. The hottest part. <laughs> the hottest part. Yes, you're right. And is there any difference between eight and thirteen micrometer? There is almost no difference. Uh, for example, in this uh, simulation, I uh, used uh, models of atmosphere and optics uh, where they give no uh, absorption coefficients to the resulting image. So we cannot see any difference, but if we uh, count the atmosphere, we will see, <laughs> we will see them. Uh, hello, thank you for your presentation. Uh, did you consider uh, the interaction between uh, infrared radiation with uh, the model itself? For example, um, reflection from the engine from the right wing. And um, uh, we can see only um, interaction uh, between radiation and atmosphere. But uh, uh, how you describe the materials uh, in um, in terms of uh, optical? Uh, is your materials for the model uh, have a spectral 
characteristic for transmission reflection on I understand you it is a good question first question was did the models uh, interact with themselves by mm -hmm. incident yes, yes. by radiation now this uh, this physical phenomena is not modeled so I don't uh, estimate this type of interaction the second question was about materials and materials now uh, only um, are only used as a uh, I only have uh, um, spectral uh, grayness uh, coefficient. Every material has an own spectral uh, grayness coefficient, and we just multiply the resulting in um, illumination by this value. No transmissions or reflections coefficients. Uh, reflections is a grayness value. So, okay, thank you. My curiosity. Um, so you have shown the temperature of body uh, 265 Kelvin, yeah? but this means that uh, the airplane uh, just uh, exists in ambient conditions. Yeah? Now let's imagine if the airplane is flight at the height of uh, 10 kilometers. So the ambient temperature is minus 50 uh, centigrade. So how this scene uh, should be changed? Have you some feeling? Uh, <laughs> yes, I I understood. And uh, to be honest, I used a uh, temperature for this body uh, using uh, an aircraft uh, aircraft creating manual. I don't know how to say it because it's an uh, international world standard, and they say that at the height of four kilometers, uh, there is a atmosphere temperature is like minus 17 Celsius degrees. So I just applied it to the picture, but if we wanted to look at this picture at more colder temperature, this uh, result will be much darker. So the uh, illumination will be low, more, lower. More, <laughs> yeah. so it will be will be partially invisible. It will be partially invisible. And most interesting thing that I found out while this rendering is that if we want to make our plane invisible in radio lens, we make it black and uh, very absorbed, absorbent. But if you make it black and very absorbent, it is perfectly visible in infrared. <laughs> so the most invisible planes for infrared are that, that what will be polished to mirror state. <laughs> okay. So thanks for questions. No, no questions. Yes. <laughs> so thanks. Very nice report. Uh, now Dmitry Potiriai will speak about uh, composite nanoparticles based in HBN and graphene for 2D printing. No City State University. The technical university. <clears throat> Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is Dmitry Potiraev. Besides, I'm going to present you a research article titled Composite Nanoparticles Based on Hexagonal Structure at Boron Nitride and Graphene for Two-Dimensional Printing. Hmm. My report will be in a five part. Its introduction, its morphology of initial materials, morphology of composites of various compounds, electric properties of composites of various compounds, and discussion. Uh, let's start from uh, all these already known statements. It is known that graphene deposed on uh, hexagonal boron nitrate uh, film uh, shows the highest uh, mobility, uh, highest carrier mobility. Uh, anyway, the, there is a, uh, recent studies uh, shows uh, the heterostructures graphene and boron nitride compared to graphene uh, silicon dioxide. Uh, they are showing that uh, boron nitride titanium films is way better dielectric for the using with graphene because they are smoother and uh, keeps no building charges. Uh, the boron nitride graphene composite is interesting in because uh, boron nitride uh, uh, 
has a similar structure to the carbon materials. His lattice constant almost the same as the, uh, as the carbon. So this gives a novel of the, this research. Uh, and instead of uh, uh, researching the heterostructures of uh, these two materials, we were using the nanoparticles in uh, suspension because it's very important in applications of two-dimensional printing. Uh, uh, properties of initial materials were carried out in an atomic force microscopy of the uh, boron nitrate. It's clearly seen the hexagonal structure of these particles. It is uh, confirmed by the Raymond data. Here we can see a pike at uh, 1370 inverted centimeters, what corresponds to the hexagonal structure of this material. And the electrical studies of this material were carried out too. Uh, in, uh, capacity voltage characteristics were measured. From this data was calculated the building charge density. It's about six times 10 to the 10th degree inverted centimeter squared, which is a one, uh, uh, order of magnitude lower than in the silicon dioxide. Uh, an atomic force microscopy of graphene, we can clearly see the uh, particles uh, of graphene. The lateral size of graphene is varies from 50 to 200 nanometers. Uh, it's bigger than uh, boron nitrate particles, uh, who has the lateral size about 30 to 50 nanometers. And uh, the Raymond data clearly show us the three pikes correspond to the uh, exactly graphene, but uh, the peak D is lower than the peak G. Peak D corresponds to the defects and it, he is lower. It's lower because uh, the passivation of the structural defects and edges of the graphene particles uh, by hydrogen during the synthesis in plasma. Uh, the morphology of any composite particles of various compounds were studied. Here we can see compounds uh, one to one and one to four. In our compounds one to one, we can clearly see the clusters of uh, boron nitride uh, on top of graphene particle. In uh, compound one to four, we can see not uh, clusters, but single uh, nanoparticles of boron nitride based on top of the graphene vertically. In the compound one to 10, we can see some interesting morphology that uh, graphene is encapsulated by the single uh, boron nitride particles in, and the most biggest concentration of the graphene show us the clusters of boron nitride decorated with the graphene uh, scrolls. Uh, electric properties of the composites of various compounds were studied too, and uh, it was noticed when the liquid part of the suspense was pure water, composite particles did not synthesize, and we can see clearly linear current voltage characteristics, but when we use some water plus alcohol uh, liquid part of the uh, suspension, we can see some nonlinear current voltage characteristics and it uh, gets more bigger with another compound. We can see um, uh, with the compounds ranging from one to four to one to 10, uh, high stereosis up to four orders of magnitude is observed the current voltage characteristics. This feature is presumably associated with the, making the multi-barrier system with the tunnel transparent barriers. Uh, and it leads to the capture and confinement of carrier on the graphene. In a discussion, I may say that by varying the compounds of the composite films obtained, that the differ both in morphological and electrical parameters can be. In particular, at a certain composition, graphene particles differently decorated with 
hexagonal structure boron nitride particles were found, and it leads to the emergence of a multi-barrier system and its manifestation in the electrical characteristics. Uh, that's it. I will glad to answer some questions. Thank you. So, questions, please. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Can I show the first slide, please? Oh, no, yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. So, um, as I see, you go used a silicon dioxide as a substrate. Okay, and what type of silicon dioxide did you use? Uh, this is not my work. This is uh, in literature what uh, has done already. It's common fact that the graphene on top of silicon dioxide gives the uh, way uh, lower characteristics when we use silicon dioxide instead of boron nitrate. Here we can see topology of the uh, surfaces and the graphene on top of silicon dioxide is... Uh, uh, is bad, but graphene on top of boron nitrate is uh, smoother. And the same in the b charge density map. Here we can see in silicon dioxide a lot of charges build in the surface, but on top of boron nitrate there is absolutely no building charges. Oh, okay, I see. It's from the literature. Um, okay, thank you. So could you please to show slide number seven? So first of all, the question, uh, what kind of uh, hexagonal boron nitride uh, did you use? Is it powder? Is it uh, deposited by some uh, technique? So how did you deposit it, a hexagonal uh, boron nitride? Uh, um, Suspensions of the composite nanoparticles were prepared Carefully, we were prepared uh, initial materials in suspension and it was mixed in uh, yeah. this course, uh, concentration. Of course, it should be prepared carefully, this is true. But uh, the question is, how did you get, so in which form did you get hexagonal boron nitride? Before we put it on the suspension, it was uh, like powder, powder. Okay. nanopowder. Okay, then the question, how can you distinguish on this picture where boron nitride is and where is graphene, in graphene flakes? How can you distinguish? For me, it's the same. So, and you say in some cases it's encapsulated, in some cases this is mixture, this is boron nitride, this is flakes. So I cannot distinguish from these images. Can you uh, say uh -huh. some hints? So how can I understand where the plates are where the uh, boron nitride. Uh, it is about uh, the size of the particle. It was the studies of initial materials, and we can see that boron nitride is uh, 30 to 50 nanometers, and graphene is from 50 to 200. And we can make uh, conclusion that is a bigger part is a graphene, and a smaller part is a boron nitride. No questions. Thank you very much again. <laughs>当时是我们和客户讨论，觉得原来传统的建网发射的话都是重复建设，所以成本也很高，维护也很复杂。So we talked with our customers again to see if we could combine 2G, 3G, and 4G network equipment into a single unit. That's when single RAM was developed. According to our customers, this was a very attractive technological invention. Our vision is 
giving all of our customers two years from now broadband data coverage where we do have voice coverage today that we can do that. In 2010, the 4G LTE 800 MHz commercial service was first launched in Germany. The 800 MHz spectrum is best suited for the vast countrysides of Europe. In these so-called white spots, outside, in the countryside, in the small villages of Germany, hey, now it's really fast internet in my hands. Next. Uh, talk will be done by Sergei Ponomaryov, uh, thermal hysteresis in the resistance in indium 2 selenium 3 film on silicon 111 surface from the Institute of Semiconductor Physics. Good afternoon. My name is Ponomaryov Sergei, and uh, I will tell about uh, thermal hysteresis. Uh, in the resistance of indium 273 film on uh, silicon 111 surface. Uh, in the beginning of uh, 21st uh, century, layered uh, two-dimensional materials, uh, especially two-dimensional uh, metal propaganites, uh, have become <coughs> have become promising candidates for future microelectronics, photonics, and uh, Photovoltaics, uh, due to the fact that uh, this class of materials includes uh, metals, dielectrics, uh, and uh, semiconductors. In D2, Selen 3 is a uh, 2D metal halogenit, and uh, it is of uh, interest uh, for uh, development of solar photocells, uh, photodetectors operating in the range from ultraviolet to near infrared, and uh, memory devices. Recently, about uh, 10 into 273 phases uh, uh, have been experimentally discovered and theoretically predicted. Uh, but uh, when uh, taking into account uh, the stability of these phases under the normal conditions and uh, their known uh, electrophysical properties, alpha and uh, beta phases uh, uh, attract uh, interest for uh, following technological uh, applications. These uh, phases uh, have uh, temperatures of uh, uh, growth about uh, 200 and 250 degrees of uh, Celsius. The rest of phases are usually unstable under the normal conditions. Uh, <clears throat> however, the integration of uh, in two Thelen-3 heterostructures uh, with the silicon uh, electronics uh, with the practice control of uh, phase, uh, uh, defect concentration, and uh, electrophysical properties uh, during the growth is a current challenge for uh, epitaxy, epitaxial technology. So the problem uh, is uh, uh, consists of a study of the Van der Waals epitaxy in D2 stand 3 film on the retinal surface. And uh, to solve this uh, problem, we made the next aims. Uh, there are implementation and uh, optimization of epitaxial uh, growth technique, the study of film's uh, morphological characteristics, and analysis of the film's electrophysical properties. Uh, experiments were carried out uh, by using in situ reflection electron uh, microscopy. This method uh, allows uh, to obtain uh, in situ images of processes on uh, substrate's surface with uh, monatomic step level resolution and in real time. Uh, there you can see uh, X situ IFM image of uh, layered in D2 serum 3 with uh, 8 uh, thick thickness, eight, with 8 nanometer thick uh, film. Uh, the bright areas uh, uh, on the picture correspond uh, to uh, correspond to three D islands uh, uh, formed uh, due to the rapid growth uh, in the regions where uh, screw dislocations uh, exit uh, to the surface. Uh, the dark regions uh, correspond uh, to layer by layer 
uh, graphs. <clears throat> Uh, you can, uh, ah, and uh, there you can see uh, the uh, IFM profile <coughs> of uh, 2D, 2D island. Uh, uh, there you can see uh, that uh, thickness is uh, uh, one nanometer, and uh, it agrees with the thickness of uh, in the two trillion uh, three of layer. Uh, then. Uh, there you can see a temperature dependence, dependence uh, of uh, the resistance. Uh, <coughs> there you can see uh, a hysteresis uh, with a jump um, in the resistance uh, by four orders. And uh, this uh, hysteresis most likely uh, agrees with the hysteresis uh, with the transition from uh, beta phase of uh, in vitro century to beta with the uh, H uh, phase. Uh, then, uh, uh, from the uh, last uh, graph, uh, we obtain uh, the temperature dependence of uh, conductance, and uh, the slope of uh, this uh, graph uh, made it possible to estimate the band gap uh, of uh, obtained film, and it was about a uh, half uh, electron volt. <coughs> <laughs> and uh, it agrees uh, with the band gap uh, of uh, beta phase of uh, in the two and three. Uh, and so, um, um, so we uh, grow the semiconductor in the two and three film with the layered uh, structure. We uh, found the hysteresis uh, uh, with the jumped by uh, four orders uh, and that corresponds to the transition and uh, we estimate uh, the uh, band gap of obtained film. That's all. Thank you very much for your report. Please, questions? Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, can you please show a slide with uh, in situ uh, SAM spectroscopy? Yes. Uh, can you tell um, uh, a bit more about it? Uh, which uh, difference uh, in uh, picture between phases did you found? Mm -hmm. Which differences between what? Uh, did you found um, uh, did you found any um, difference between B and BH phases uh, by this technique? Uh, when we uh, use this technique, we uh, have grown uh, in the beta, beta in the two salient uh, three phase. Uh, the beta, uh, but uh, after that, uh, we uh, use a Korea stat. Uh, and uh, we measured uh, the resistance by two contact uh, technique in this uh, grid start. So uh, we uh, didn't uh, see uh, the uh, beta with the H uh, phase in uh, reflection electron microscopy. Okay, uh, what, um, what did you see in, in situ? Uh, Second. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, when we uh, use uh, growth technique, we uh, see uh, diffraction uh, maximum that corresponds uh, to uh, uh, layered growth, and uh, after that, uh, uh, so at the uh, uh, at this moment, we uh, didn't know what phase uh, we have grown because uh, uh, there is uh, some um, not big differences in growth uh, in uh, for alpha and the beta phases. Uh, so uh, we understand that we have grown uh, beta phase uh, when uh, we uh, estimate the band gap. Uh, and uh, when we found uh, that uh, hysteresis uh, in the temperature range uh, from 140 to 180 Kelvin, and uh, uh, when we uh, uh, read the 
have read the literature, we understand that uh, this hysteresis corresponds uh, to uh, this transition, which was uh, uh, studied by STEM. Okay, thank you. So, any other question? Yes, please. Um, I'm not quite with you. Uh, let me uh, rephrase your uh, your work or your conclusion. So, uh, first of all, you have to dimensional indium selenide layer. Uh, it's yes. initial beta phase. It's known. Uh, this is according to your uh, investigation. Then you just make uh, temperature measurements, yeah. uh, and you got this hysteresis. And hysteresis occurs only the temperature. Uh, about say uh, 100 Kelvin. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So in literature is known that uh, the transition from uh, beta to beta strich phase occurs, yes. and uh, your history is, is explained by uh, yes. knowing literature results. Uh, is it correct or no? Uh, mm, nobody uh, have. Uh, what uh, this uh, hysteresis, uh, this hysteresis, uh, we uh, have uh, investigated the uh, first time. So nobody, uh, no, nobody have known about this hysteresis. So and this is just assumption that you have transitioned from one phase to the other one. Yes. Okay, but there are plenty of uh, opportunities to show that uh, this transition takes place. So do, do you have some plans to evidence that this is indeed <laughs> better street phase at low temperatures? Thanks. Do you understand? Uh, we, <laughs> no, I don't understand the last question. Nice. Uh, we can uh, talk about it at the dinner, for example. No. Have you any experimental Results that must say that it's really such transition. Uh, no, by that time uh, we haven't another experimental results. But have you any plans how to, mm, to oh. prove your suggestion? Uh, yes, uh, I know that uh, at the institute at the nearest time uh, there will be a great start where we can uh, see, for example, uh, Curious uh, um, spectres. <laughs> I forgot uh, English terminology. Uh, Raman, Raman, yes. And I think that uh, when it will be, we can mm -hmm. investigate this. Thank you. No questions. Thank you very much again. So. Next talk will be done by Margarita Shekhnina, Investigation of the Conductivity of Polycrystalline Silicon Under Joel Heating, Novosibirsk, Novosibirsk Technical University. Uh, good afternoon. I'm glad to present you my report today. The interfaces and surfaces uh, bring about trap states and deep levels, uh, which play an important role in forming the electric uh, properties of polysilicon films. In the present work, we study the interface of Joel Heaton on the conductivity of silicon mass resistors on a dielectric dependent on geometric uh, factors and surface states uh, at the interfaces. The experimental study was carried out on beam type test structures with a set of measure resistors of various widths made on the basis of films of mono and polycrystalline silica. A fragment of the topology of the test structure with the investigated measure resistors of widths 3, 5, and 10 micrometers is shown in this slide. Measurements were carried out by the two probe method at room 
temperature in the mode of supply from a voltage generator. The obtained current voltage characteristics were used to calculate and plot the dependencies of the relative change in the resistance of measure resistors on the specific heating power. The experimental dependencies of polycrystalline silicon measure resistors of various widths on the specific heating power are shown in this slide. As we can see, over the initial section of the curves, the resistance of the resistor structure first showed a sharp value in the range of specific heating powers, and then it asymptotically reached the saturation and changed its side, its signs. Sign. The smaller was the width of the metal resistors, the greater was the effect observed. We can observe a similar picture on the dependencies of monocrystalline silicon. Such a behavior of absurd dependencies we can mm, attribute it to the following. Since the resistors were covered with a protective dielectric, dielectric states formed at the silicon-silicon oxide interface, and these states acted as traps for charge carriers. When heated by the electric current, the charge carriers uh, released from these traps and the conductivity increased in uh, magnitude so that the uh, resistance dropped over the initial section of the dependencies. This slide shows uh, dependencies uh, of the relative change uh, in the resistance of uh, monosilicon meso resistors of different widths obtained in the Ticat Centaurus. The simulated data are seen to be in qualitative agreement with the experimental results presented earlier. Additional allowance for the charge carriers released from traps upon draw heating makes it possible to qualitatively describe the experimentally absorbed dependencies of the relative change in resistance on temperature with both the value of the temperature coefficient of resistance and its sign undergoing uh, changes with temperature. Uh, summing up the results, we can say that the performed Ticat Centaurus study of the relative change in the resistance of metal resistors on heating power showed that drops will with shallow states this pres presence normally leads to a non-monotonic dependence of resistivity makes a pronounced contribution to conductivity thank you for your attention thank you are there any questions yes please so, thank you. Um, I have a question. So, as I know, there is a semiconductor device called Varistor. It is uh, like changeable resistivity made from, made by caking of silicon carbide. So, as I see, your, your device is pretty similar to Varista. So, can you say what is the difference between your device and what is already existed? Uh, what difference with my devices and uh, so there is a already exists a semiconductor device uh, Varista. It is uh, like uh, changeable resistance. Uh, it's resistivity change with voltage applied. It made by uh, fr from uh, powder silicon carbide and as, uh, as I see your work is pretty similar to it maybe there is a difference I didn't notice it's a little hard to answer the question <laughs> for me in English um, So maybe she, if she can, she will answer you in the, in the break. Thank you. 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 Thank you
So please. Thanks. So may maybe it's not a question, maybe it's a comment. You see, it looks like that, that there was darkness. <laughs> no one was here. Then Margarita came and did something brilliant. Yeah? And it, it's better to show this story. Yeah. And so that there was something. So the background. So there, there were definitely some preliminary works from other authors. It's better to compare what it was done, what you did, what is empty place, and how did you feel this empty place. So and. I think from this point of view, this, your talk would be more beneficial. Thank you. I'd like to ask about the tariffs, which you, uh, you have used for explanation of the results. Uh, do you have any evidences of existing of these tariffs, or maybe some characteristics? Evidences? What you mean? <laughs> Can you repeat your question, please? Have you any information about the traps with the shallow state which you have used for explanation of your results? Yes. Uh, we have uh, we used uh, literature uh, information about traps, and uh, we. Hmm? We based on we this. Based uh, on this information and. Uh, and what is this information? Can you say several words? There are some other uh, authors of these words of these are your results in your laboratory. Uh, yes, it was experimental in my laboratory. Yes, you can show this. This work? Uh... No, it was also simulation, yes? Mm -hmm. But the question was about real structures. I think no. So, no question. Okay, thank you all. Uh, thank you. Uh, how did you create a style on silicon layer? On uh, your sample? Um, please so, the, how it was done? How the structures were prepared? Uh, how my structure was prepared? Yes, you show the experimental picture. I don't understand question. No, 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 no. So, am I right that you're interesting in the technology? Uh, you see it is style on silicon on your lamps. Uh, how get you uh, it is style on silicon yeah, lamps? It's an uh, ancient process or uh, you evaporated uh, uh, silicon? Do you know how it was grown, your structures? Oh, oh yes, I know. Mm. It's difficult to answer your name. It's difficult yes? to so, explain in English. Mm -hmm. No, maybe let's uh, thank the speaker and thank come you. to next report <laughs> next report is kirill kapaguzov role of core shaped contacts at vanadium dioxide nano switches Zhanov institute of semiconductor physics oh hello yeah, my work is about role of cone-shaped contacts in vanadium dioxide nanoswitchers. So what is 
what is vanadium dioxide? Vanadium dioxide is a functional material which exhibits a phase transition from semiconductor to metal phase under different external factors such as temperature, electrical field, and so on. So during this phase transition, the main physical properties like conductivity, like this constant, refractional index change. And because of such unique properties, vanadium dioxide can be is now considered as one of the most promising material for novel electronic and optic application. In one of the recent work, it was shown that vanadium dioxide nanocrystal synthesized on top of conductive atomic force microscope needle can be considered as an energy efficient resistive switcher. The small size of such element uh, leads to a small energy consumption and the cone-shaped contact leads to increasing of electrical field which leads to a low uh, low threshold voltage to change its state. So the goal of this work is to so in this work we propose a new design of such switchers based on one atom dioxide nanocrystal and two embedded nanosharp contact. We compared this geometry with two well-known geometry as well as with geometry with pellet contact. So uh, in our work I used a numerical simulation method, method to simulate a phase transition from semiconductor to metal in one dioxide during the dual heating. So I, a constant voltage was applied to one contact and the second contact was grounded and the dual heating mechanism occurs which leads to a change in conductivity which is a uh, phase transition from semiconductor to metal phase. So as a result of our simulation uh, we obtained a picture uh, of uh, electrical uh, a distribution of electrical fields and current density near the phase transition time. So as you can see from this figure, so we considered a free geometry of one pressed, one embedded, and two embedded needle. So as you can see from these three figures, there is a red region in each figure, and, this, and the size of this region is different for three different geometry. This red region corresponds to region with a uh, high electrical field and as a result a high electrical current and on the, on the on the other figure you can see the distribution of current density in 3D geometry uh, you also can notice that there is a region of high current density in all three figure and the size of this region is also different different for each geometry. And in geometry of two embedded needles, the size of this region is minimal, which leads to a lower energy consumption. We also calculated a current uh, needed to change the state of resistive switcher for three different geometry. This, as you can see, is the dependence of current through curvative radius of needle. And we obtained that the lowest current to change the state is corresponds to geometry of two embedded needles. This current was uh, seven, uh, about seven mm, microampere. Uh, we also considered the influence of contact of spreading resistance in our structure. So in the geometry of one pressed needle, as you can see from this graph and this uh, picture, uh, almost 90% of potential drops near the contact, which leads to a, a high heat loss near the contact. And as a result, uh, we need to, we need higher, we need high energy to change the state in such geometry. And as compared to geometry of one embedded needle, almost nine, the same 90% potential drops near the whole volume of crystal, 
which leads, which leads to lesser heat and loss. So to test our simulation results, we did experiments. Uh, uh, we measured a single crystal of vanadium dioxide with atomic force microscopy needle. We obtained the single crystal vanadium dioxide uh, by chemical and, uh, itching, and we measure it in the geometry of one press needle. So in recent work, uh, it was shown that in the geometry of embedded needle, the contact resistance uh, is about uh, 32 kilo ohms. And in our experiments, we showed that uh, a contact resistance is about one million ohm. Uh, it's proof that uh, in geometry of press needle, there is a great contact resistance which, le which leads to a great heat loss and which leads to a larger amount of needed current to change the state. So as a result of our work, we proposed and investigated a new resistive switcher device based on vanadium dioxide nanocrystal with two embedded needle in it. We showed that this geometry is energy efficient. It's more energy efficient compared to one pressed, one embedded needle. And we also compared it with standard uh, geometry of two flat contact. Um, so such geometry and such devices can be uh, can considered as an active element for neuromorphic systems, for new kind of electronic and optical devices. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, sorry, and can you explain, uh, maybe I missed, how you, uh, you said that you prepare the, this uh, single crystal by etching, yes? Yes, so we have so, uh, like what, polycrystalline so film of vanadium dioxide on top of. So, the so we have silicon substrates yes. and uh, silicon dioxide, buffalo and polycrystalline film of vanadium dioxide. We, and I just uh, used a chemical literature to uh, obtain like you see single crystal of vanadium dioxide or maybe uh, and then you choose one of the single yes, crystals. Yes, yes, then, like then we use an atomic force microscopy to find this single crystal and then we put it in the needle on top of this crystal like this and measure it. Thank you. So please. Uh, please, can you demonstrate the slide where as you discuss about uh, Yes, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, where in this uh, dependence of current uh, you have find a stressful transition? So this dependence, um, it is a uh, value of critical current at which a phase transition occur. So we like, uh, I did not show it in my presentation, but we obtain a dependence of current through time Yes, it looks like uh, it looks similar to dependence of conductivity through temperature. Uh, and at some point, we have a phase transition, like when ah, the filament form and the current after the phase yes, yes, and this value is the current form for uh -huh. this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, thank you for for your presentation. Uh, did you consider a heat? Uh, redistribu a redistribution inside the nanocrystal? Well, yes, uh, I obtained a distribution of temperature and heat. I did not uh, show it here. Well, but it looks similar. I th uh, yeah, it looks similar to current uh, density because we have like Joe heating mechanism. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, and uh, what means um, power to switch? Did you integrate the current uh, during the switching? Well, uh, <laughs> if we are going to talk about heat loss, uh, we need to consider, uh, we need to know the time uh, to switch from semiconductor to metal phase. Um, I'm talking here about the power to one switch. Uh, it means that 
I get, uh, I take a value of critical current and just multiply it to a constant voltage. Well, uh, if, I'm, if we're going, if we want to calculate a heat loss, we need to know the time. But in, uh, I also consider it, um, uh, and I can say that in geometry of one press needle, the time to switch is more great, uh, it's greater uh, compared with uh, different geometry because of great heat loss here. So if we have like uh, great heat loss here, we need more time to heat our crystal. Yeah, and we need to, more, we, as, as a result, we need to add more heat uh, to switch the state. Okay, thank you. No questions? Let's think. Uh, one, one, one more. Sorry. Hello. Yes. Thank you for your report. And I have one question. Uh, which uh, units uh, are you used? Uh, units, physical units for console modeling are you used uh, during the modeling uh, process? And uh, which uh, uh, parameters of material are you used? So about material parameters, we used an experimental obtained dependence of conductivity for temperature. And also uh, our model also includes uh, dependence of um, heat capacity for temp temperature and uh, dielectric constants uh, and something else I forgot, uh, but it was taken from the literature from well-known, uh, it is well-known uh, value for vanadium dioxide and as well as for gold uh, contact. Yes, I forgot to mention that we used the gold for contact because it's form, it is well known that gold is form a uh, good atomic contact to vanadium dioxide. So, and about uh, units, uh, well, uh, our, the size of our crystal was 30 nanometers, 30 to 30 nanometers and the high was uh, 300 nanometers. Yeah, and I also did uh, different experiments with different size of crystal because we need to lower our size uh, in order to lower uh, heat uh, to one switch. Am I answered to your question or no? Particularly. Uh, I uh, mean uh, physical units in uh, uh, com console uh, program. ACBs uh, and another maybe oh, multi physics units. Yes, yes. So I used uh, Joel heating couple, which includes uh, Joel heating coupling, which includes uh, heat, heat transfer and uh, ACDC, I think. So it's all it's just uh, ohms, ohms law and heat transfer equation. So it's called Joel heating coupling, multi physics. Yeah. Okay. No questions. Thank you very much. So next report is will be done by Pavel Zhikarev. Conditions for the formation of a vertical nanowires and crystal crystalline clusters of gallium arsenide during the self-catalyzed growth. Institute of Semiconductor Physics and NCTU. The most popular method to, for formation of gallium arsenide in the wires is self-catalyzed growth by vapor liquid solid mechanism. And the necessary condition for self-catalyzed growth is the substrate coverage with mark film. This growth sensitive to arsenic and gallium flux ratio and mask film properties. In all experiments, along vertical nanowire, we see parasitic growth of gallarsenide crystallites. The goal of our work was to determine the conditions for crystallites and the vertical gallarsenide nanowires formation during self-catalyzed growth 
using Monte Carlo simulation. The modeling was carried out in SILSIM 3D software package. This model considered a five component system with uh, gallium in solid and liquid state, atomic and molecular arsenic, and material of mask film. Uh, this slide shows uh, nanowire formation and indicate the main atomic process in the system. This model is uh, considered uh, this model is modified by introduction process leads to etching of mask film with uh, liquid gallium. Uh, probability of each process what happens? <laughs> probability of each pro process uh, dep exponentially depends on activation energy of each process. Now I show the simulation results. Um, the initial Galliarsenite 1 on 1 B substrate uh, coated with uh, mask film, mask film had uh, through holes with gallium droplet. At uh, low arsenic fluxes, nanowire are formed from gallium droplets. At uh, high arsenic fluxes, nanocrystallites are created. Uh, this slide demonstrates uh, formation of uh, through holes. Uh, during etching process, um, Mask film particles continuously evaporate from uh, gallium droplet surface in all directions. This can lead to hole overgrowing. After that, nanowire formation being impossible as occurs at uh, high etching rate. At low etching rate, gallium droplet increase in size uh, by the time it uh, reaches uh, film, mask film, in, uh, substrate interface. And uh, later, nanowire formation, uh, hole, hole in mask film doesn't overgrow. In these slides, we can see that uh, at high etching rate, uh, nanowire formation is possible if we reduce mask film thickness. In, in these slides, uh, this slide demonstrates nanowire and crystallite formation in a single grow process. Uh, to reduce uh, nucleation time, we used stepped surface. At the initial moment of time, gallium droplets nucleate at one of the steps initiating nanocrystallized growth. Later, uh, new structures appear on uh, next step, uh, which are nanowires. Mm, gallium droplet nucleation decreased the average gallium surface concentration. Uh, Gallium-sonite nanostructure formation decreased arsenic surface concentration. And uh, next structures, later, uh, new uh, gallium nucleation, gallium droplet nucleation and its crystallization appear, uh, occurs under new grow conditions, uh, which leads to different, different shapes of nanostructure. In conclusions, when Monte Carlo model is self-catalyzed nanowire growth was extended by the introduction of process for etching the film mask with liquid gallium. The dependence of gallium on a crystal shape on the arsenic flux is demonstrated. The growth of gallium nanowires is possible at a certain ratio of the thickness of a mask film and the film etching rate will be liquid gallium and a necessary condition for the formation of nanowires and crystallites in a single grow process is a charge of gallium and arsenic surface concentration during growth. Thank you. Thank you.
these questions to the reporter. Please. I'm just wondering, when you simulate your nanowires, they grow in such strange curve. Yeah. So why it is so? I would expect something like when the uh, wire grows in one direction, uh, just uh, to, to some direction which is, uh, how to say, um, in some crystallographic uh, direction, which is uh, preferable for the growth. But in your case, it's somehow bending. Why it's happened like this? The question in uh, why prefer the crystallization orientation? Why they change direction during growth? Why there is difference? So in principle, I would expect that the wire should go in some preferential direction. So it should be straight lines yeah, in one direction. You, you have shown that the, crystal, the growth of uh, these nanowires goes like that. Yeah, yeah. here, for example. Yeah. And I would expect that it should be uh, directed in Vertical. one uh, crystallographic direction, ah. vertically on the some angle or whatever. No, we have a, a vertical growth for nanowires and uh, crystallites growth in, uh, in all directions and uh, maybe um, can be parasitic growth in other directions with uh, uh, with uh, we we have uh, with uh, nanostructure in its directions because. Uh, In with crystallization orientation, uh, bending gap uh, bending energy for move for crystallization galvanized structures is. Uh, Prefer, preferly, prepare, uh, preferly when uh, other directions. Why? The question is uh, why? Its uh, energy is lower when, when, when in our directions. And what is this direction? What is it? Direction? Mm -hmm. So I think that you can explain a little bit later because maybe you don't understand the question. I don't know. So no other questions. Yes. Thank you, speaker. Thank you. So and now we listen. Ramin Shkaksai, resistance switching effect in the thermal uh, silicon dioxide films treated in electro cyclotron resonance hydrogen plasma. This is semiconductor physics. Hello, colleagues. I'm pleased to see you in this beautiful place. And the uh, topic of my presentation is on a slide. And let's start. Currently, memory devices. Where is my diagram? No. Okay. Currently, memory devices play an important role in operating modern computing equipment. Memory market consists of the read-only memory devices and uh, random access memory devices. 
The advantage of ROM devices such as flash memory uh, is non-volatile and uh, high storage capacity. The disadvantage of uh, this technology is the small write and read uh, information cycle number. However, RAM devices have the high number of uh, write read information cycles, but RAM operation is volatile. So, alternative technologies, uh, alternative node technologies such as uh, PRAM, PCM, RAM, uh, RERAM may be promising. These new technologies combine uh, the advantages of RAM and RAM in in single device. And now I will talk about uh, RERAM. Uh, as you know, uh, each emerging technologies have disadvantages. And one of the main disadvantages of RERAM is forming process. Forming is a soft electrical breakdown of functional layer uh, of memory store. Uh, for solving this problem, uh, non stoichiometric oxides are used. Uh, non stoichiometric oxides contain a high concentration of oxygen vacancies, uh, which play an important role uh, in the forming and uh, resistive switching uh, processes. And one of the possibilities to control we introduce oxygen vacancies into the oxide layers is treatment in electron cyclotron resonance hydrogen plasma. And ECR plasma unit consists of a plasma reactor and a sample loading system. Uh, electron cyclotron resonance is achieved under the influence of alternative electric uh, uh, current and constant multipole magnetic current. Uh, uh, at the treatment process, the following parameters are varied. The first is source power, second, it is uh, sample displacement potential, and third is uh, treatment time in plasma. So, uh, three series of samples were treated, and for series number one and series number two, uh, the treatment time was varied. Uh, at a displacement potential of minus uh, 300 and minus 150 volts, correspondingly. Uh, and uh, for series number three, the SR source power was varied uh, and uh, obtained CX layers were characterized by XPS method. Uh, plasma treatment increases uh, memory structure's conductivity. Uh, the treatment for 6 uh, to uh, 15 minutes results in resistor switching with two resistor states. Uh, eight, uh, animation don't work in this, in your computer. <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, okay. You it's very you can strange explain. why animation don't work in, uh, uh, computer. Uh, this graph uh, <laughs> distract my presentation. Explain what can we see here. I, I know, okay. <laughs> the treatment for 6 to 5, 15 minutes results in resistive switching with two resistive states. Uh, samples from series number 1 and number 2 are characterized by high forming voltage uh, compared to uh, switching voltage. And then uh, forming voltage of memory structures just uh, decreases with increasing ECR source power. Uh, um, as you don't can see, uh, the sample treated at the highest ECR power source is this, this three graph uh, uh, power source. Uh, ah, sorry, as you can see, this uh, uh, dependence. Uh, in this dependence, the highest ECR power source exhibits a forming free resistive uh, switching effect. And uh, as a result, I had plot the correlation dependence of uh, uh, XPS measured parameter X and silicon oxide thickness uh, and selected forming free area. Uh, that's all. Uh, your question, please. But Conclu conclusions?
uh, no conclusions. Uh, we uh, get uh, structures with uh, forming free resistive, uh, stable resistive uh, switching effect uh, by uh, treated in electron cyclotron resonance pattern. Thank you. <laughs> These questions, yes. I'd like to ask you about preparation of your structure. Do you have used plasma for create mesostructure uh, of uh, silicon oxide layer? Or silicon oxide layer was uh, in any case without uh, structuring? Uh, silicon oxides was uh, uh, grown by thermal methods and yes, then and uh, we uh, treated uh, uh, films in... Uh, treated only surface? Only surface, only yes. Surface. With contacts? Uh, don't, uh, without contacts. And then... Uh, and then you... Uh, yes, you then you we uh, deposit contacts. And how do you explain uh, parents' uh, effects of your plasma? Uh, uh, a minute, please. Uh, then... Uh, we explain this uh, effect uh, by uh, uh, by hydrogen, uh, hydrogen uh, uh, reaction between uh, oxide at the surface uh, and uh, create uh, OH groups in the surface, and uh, then. Uh, uh, we create uh, we create uh, oxygen oxides at the surface, and then uh, oxide diffusion in the uh, volume volume of film. Yes, it's so our suppose. suppose. Have no, uh, you have no filament in your structure. Yes. Uh, yes. Some okay. you have introduced some traps. Yes, oh, no. traps its oxygen vacancies, and uh, we uh, uh, f f filament. Uh, no, our switching uh, is uh, uh, based on the filament. Okay, thank you. No questions. No questions. Thank you very much. And now we have break for dinner and we meet here i hope that all of you come at three o'clock Uh, promising uh, spectral range uh, for a number of applications. Uh, for example, uh, security systems, uh, molecular spectroscopy, biomedical applications, and so on. However, there is a lack of uh, materials for this range, especially uh, optically active materials that can uh, uh, rotate the polarization plane. This problem can be solved by metamaterials and metasurfaces. They are artificial structural materials uh, uh, that uh, usually uh, consists of uh, resonant elements. Uh, they uh, give an opportunity to obtain necessary spectral response. Moreover, if uh, there are a lot of resonances uh, in such systems, uh, it uh, can lead to uh, remember novel phenomena as uh, fano resonance, rubby splitting, uh, electromagnetically induced transparency, as well as uh, enhance uh, usual electromagnetic effects. It's known that uh, objects uh, that do not coincide with their mirror image uh, can uh, rotate the polarization plane. Uh, these materials called chiral. 
uh, the simplest uh, uh, example of these uh, structures are helices. Unfortunately, uh, it is a great challenge to form these structures by usual semiconductor technology that is planar. Uh, by the way, uh, unconventional methods like direct laser writing or multi-photon polymerization are uh, consequent, uh, so they're expensive and time-consuming. So, uh, in our laboratory, uh, laboratory uh, an original uh, technology to form uh, chiral metasurfaces uh, was developed. The main idea is shown here. Firstly, an array of uh, metallic strips uh, antenna array over polymer substrate and uh, polymer bar over, over them uh, was formed by conventional lithographic uh, methods. Then this structure uh, was processed by nanoimprint uh, lithography. After hot embossing, uh, these metal strips were embedded into the substrate and form uh, semi uh, se uh, half turn uh, quasi helices. Uh, and uh, here you can see uh, the uh, uh, some images of these structures. Uh, it's uh, worth to note that I'm, uh, I'm sorry that uh, if uh, the height of this bar is low. Uh, the helices uh, turn to omega-like uh, quasi-helices. Moreover, this technology is scalable. Here you can see a uh, double-layer metasurface uh, with a period of uh, 200 nanometers and uh, 150 nanometers height between layers. We are going to use uh, these structures to form uh, infrared metamaterials. Uh, Electromagnetic characteristics of such structures uh, were studied uh, experimentally as well as by numerical simulation. Here you can see uh, transmission spectra of these materials, black lines, and uh, there are a lot of spectral features. Uh, we have shown that there is a half wave wavelength resonance, uh, a number of guided mode resonances, and fabri perot oscillations uh, over the whole spectral range. This uh, phenomena leads to uh, enhancement in polarization plane rotation uh, that are shown in red. Moreover, uh, there are a lot of guided mode resonances, not only because of uh, high thickness uh, of the substrate, uh, by also by uh, very interesting eff effect. Uh, here you can see a, a color plot map uh, from frequency and length of the antennas. There are uh, two families of uh, features, guided mode resonances that do not depend on uh, antenna length and uh, resonances in antennas. Uh, it is clearly shown that uh, they uh, reveal anti-crossing behavior. This means uh, that uh, hybrid modes uh, are formed from two purely, uh, purely modes. Uh, moreover, we have shown that this uh, metamaterial uh, exactly reveal uh, chiral characteristics. Uh, they do not only cut off uh, poly uh, polarization as usual polarizer. In order to show that, uh, we, studies, uh, we studied chiral dichroism. This is the difference between uh, transmission coefficients uh, between right and left circular polarizations. And indeed, uh, the maximum of this parameter uh, is uh, uh, situated uh, in uh, the dipole resonance. Moreover, uh, this parameter uh, uh, can be enhanced uh, by optimization of geometrical parameters. And uh, we have found that this parameter may be enhanced several times.
to sum up, firstly, we uh, developed original method to form chiral meta surfaces and meta materials. Then we have showed that uh, spectral response uh, can be uh, explained by uh, resonances uh, in antennas, guided mode resonances, and fabric oscillations. And finally, the flexible design of uh, these structures is promising to form novel uh, chiral metamaterials, polarization rotators, and spectral fil filters. Thank you for your attention. Questions, please. Thank you very much. Please, uh, who has a question? Yes, please. So my question is about uh, fundamental uh, uh, fundamental modes of linear antennas. So maybe you show some gap in the spectrum. So you, uh, as far as I understood, uh, you have uh, first and third resonance because they are uh, dipole active, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but you have angle of incidence something about 50 percent, right? So 50 degree. Uh, yes. Yeah. In this case, I would expect appearance of uh, normally uh, dipole forbidden mode, uh, second mode. Did you see something like this? Because due to retardation effect, uh, you should see uh, not only odd mode, but also even mode. Exactly. We uh, have seen uh, different types of uh, antenna resonances. Uh, we think that uh, it is because of periodicity. For example, in uh, one antenna, uh, you cannot excite uh, by uh, plane polarization uh, or dipole mode of uh, high level. Uh, and uh, here we see both uh, fundamental and uh, high order modes uh, in experiment and in uh, simulation too. So, frequency for delegate. This is the first uh, order mode, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Then eight uh, delegate. This is third order mode. Right? No, it, it is not. Uh, uh, it is second order mode uh, because. Uh, antennas situated uh, near uh, each other and uh, uh, the position of the resonance uh, can be uh, shifted uh, because of their interaction. Uh, then I don't understand how it can be. So you should see only dipole active modes. Does it mean that the, this second mode at uh, 8 terahertz possess dipole moment? Uh, it's not dipole mode. But why uh, then it can be seen in transmission spectrum? Uh, this uh, phenomenon should be studied uh, more carefully. Uh, but uh, if uh, we look at the uh, field uh, field map, uh, we can see that uh, there is no dipole uh, moment. Thank you for the report. Uh, one slide back, please. And uh, why uh, such difference between simulation? Thank you for your question. Uh, unfortunately, uh, guided mode resonances uh, are too sensitive to uh, structural defects uh, as well as uh, ohmic losses in materials. So uh, we can see uh, in experiment uh, spectral features that correspond to 
uh, guided mode resonances, but uh, they are in, uh, they don't uh, excite uh, very care uh, very um, uh, effectively. Some other questions, please. No questions. Thank you okay. very much again. And there are over 800 telecom service providers across the whole of Europe. The operator community relies on a diverse supply base for competitive advantage in technologies. We're the operator. We would uh, consistently, with a team of experts inside the company, seek across the world for the latest innovations, the latest developments, the potential suppliers that could give us a leadership position, we strive for performance leadership and quality for our customers. Of course, we did develop a lot of things ourselves, but for infrastructure, we relied very heavily across the world for the very best in class of uh, suppliers. 2007年華為跟沃達豐一起在西班牙馬德里成立了全球第一個聯合創新中心華為和沃達豐之間的聯合創新計劃當會議快結束的時候沃達豐客戶突然提出了一個命題這是一個跨時代的創新雙方應該努
drawing of monocrystals of vanadium dioxide is this, but in this work we use uh, relief contrast instead of material contrast. Um, we use uh, standard MOSFET reactor for this uh, with uh, vanadyl, vanadyl acetyl acetonate as precursor. It was heated uh, in source at uh, 180 degrees, then carried by flow of ergon into reaction zone when it decomposes at 50 at 500 degrees and form the film. Um, first, we obtain selectivity of growth by uh, decreasing partial pressure of precursor by diluting the flow of uh, carrier gas by, by an inner gas. Uh, we don't know exact partial pressure of precursor, but uh, assuming that uh, precursor vapor is saturated, uh, we can say that if we dilute flows one by one, we get a uh, decrease in partial pressure by half. So uh, uh, at 25% uh, of initial point, we have uh, fully selective growth. We have the film fully localized on the surface of aluminum uh, and absolutely no growth at silicon oxide surface, but uh, pure silicon oxide substrate without aluminum is uh, not, uh, remains uh, clear after the growth. The growth did occur on this substrate, but it it was a regular film with voids, uh, so uh, we assume that um, in the absence of aluminum, the precursor, uh, the precursor find another points of initiation. Uh, then we uh, investigated temperature after effects of the selectivity. We started from point two when we have partial selectivity. Then we increased and decreased synthesis temperature. Uh, increasing temperature of the growth uh, leads to enhancing of selectivity and decreasing the temperature leads to absence of selectivity and the change of morphology of the film. Um, we investigated um, films obtained at the full selectivity. We found, uh, we measured um, electrical resistance. We found uh, decrease in three orders of magnitude in resistance. Um, which according to M and R phases, phase transition, we uh, investigated the X-ray diffraction spectra and uh, we found no additional peaks on the films grown on silica and on alumina, uh, except of course aluminum. So we can say that phase composition is the same. Uh, we suppose uh, the following mechanism for this. Uh, the CVD growth is the superposition of uh, adsorption of precursor, possible desorption from the surface and reaction. Uh, desorption process uh, increases with temperature. So at um, some critical point where surface concentration isn't enough, uh, growth on silica surface didn't start it. So we see this white zone. Uh, alumina did not allow precursor to desorb from its surface. Uh, we suppose that because uh, ligand exchange, because between uh, alumina and vanadyl acetyl acetonate. Uh, so in this area, we can obtain selective growth. Uh, to estimate uh, thickness of the film, we use some kind of exotic technique. We use energy dispersive, energy dispersive uh, X-ray analysis. We uh, 
uh, heated our samples with electron beam and recorded X-ray spectra. Uh, we scanned the whole sample of uh, the whole area of the sample, the all uh, five millimeters. Uh, we have a small reactor and uh, see um, next futures. First, uh, aluminum have a uh, biggest difference uh, in film thickness. The film on the silicon is mostly uniform. This can be explained by different uh, limiting mechanism of the growth. Uh, aluminum, because of absence of desorption, is uh, transport li uh, the growth on aluminum surface uh, aluminum surface is transport limited it means that uh, all precursor that reach the surface uh, takes part in reaction the growth on silicon dioxide is uh, uh, reaction limited that means the bottleneck of reaction uh, of overall growth reaction is uh, chemical reaction of the sort or of the composition of precursor. Uh, so, uh, because of um, because of non uniformity of partial pressure of partial pre pressure of precursor, this this is a reaction based issue. We have uh, some. And uniformity on alumina surface and quite uh, uniform thickness on the silicon surface. Uh, the next thing we um, observed is uh, local thinning of the um, uh, one atom dioxide film near the aluminum part. Uh, we suppose that can be because of irreversible capture uh, by the aluminum of uh, precursor molecule. Uh, precursor molecule can diffuse from the silicon dioxide to aluminum, but can diffuse back. So, uh, we firstly uh, obtained the technology of selective growth of one adium dioxide. Uh, we shown that it can be obtained by uh, increasing synthesis temperature or decrease in partial pressure and uh, we shown that uh, the film uh, demonstrate phase transition the most interesting thing of an atom dioxide thank you for your attention Okay, thank you. Um, can you show the X-ray spectrum? This uh, no, the first one. Yeah. Uh, next, 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 next. X-ray spectrum. Yes, this one. Mm -hmm. So, can you explain the noise uh, uh, on the spectrum? What is Attributed to it's a substrate, not from substrate or what? Mm, can you repeat, please? So, as I see, there is a clear visible peaks on the spectrum, and there is a like hill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because we use uh, um, powder uh, X ray diffraction, oh. we take uh, the spectrum. Not from single large object, but from thin film on okay. the surface. So there is um, there mm. is this feature. And can you tell? Um, so uh, you obtained like the monoclinic phase, yes? Uh, After synthesis. So uh, there is a M phase and B phase, yes, and some other phase. It can be grown. And uh, only M phase exhibits the uh, transition. Unfortunately, we found uh, B phase, this is parasitic phase, but it's also found on uh, silica surface and aluminum surface. 
um, so we um, can say that is not um, aluminum is not the problem is not the reason for this um, parsit phase thank you Thank you for your presentation. And I have a simple question, maybe more than that. But uh, correct me, please. Uh, you are using vanadium dioxide and you're creating a technology to deposit it on the aluminum surface. But uh, will be it uh, comparable with uh, traditional CMOS technology? Uh, for example, I want to use, I want to use such uh, devices as memory in my custom AC design. So maybe it's available in several years. Uh, I think it uh, can be integrated in CMOS technology at uh, back end of line. Uh, the after, um, after metallization step. Uh, it, um, it, uh, this method use low temperature it uh, have no exotic material so I I um, the whole purpose of this work is to integrate vanadium dioxide in uh, okay. CMOS technology in CMOS circuits Be uh, because of that partition we use aluminum because aluminum is um, good uh, have good Compatibility with silicon. Are you satisfied? Yes. <laughs> no other question. So thank you very much. Thank you. Now Nikita Lysenko will tell about various elective MOS CVD synthesis of vanadium dioxide B and vanadium dioxide M phases on silicon substrates. Close thing. Uh, uh, colleague, uh, let's start. Vanadium dioxide is a material considered as material for post-silicon -electro post electronics. Uh, vanadium dioxide is a polymorphic material and uh, each phase is uh, has own uh, electrical and optical properties and uh, synthesis conditions. Uh, the most uh, interesting for practical uh, application are B and M phases. Uh, pro their properties uh, shown in the table. Uh, heterostruction uh, based on uh, different uh, phases of vanadium dioxide uh, are two uh, practical, practical interest, uh, but uh, forming such structures is a big challenge uh, because uh, formation each um, formation condition of uh, each uh, phases is different. Uh, therefore, uh, formation. Um, a simula uh, simultaneous formation of B and M phases in uh, one uh, growth process uh, seemed impossible. Uh, this work devoted to solving this problem. Uh, uh, let's move on to experimental details. Uh, uh, substrates uh, was uh, yeah, substrate were. Uh, covered uh, by uh, polyvinyl alcohol. Uh, some substrates uh, partially covered, like one. And uh, uh, like, uh, synthesis condition of uh, uh, like we established uh, necessary for uh, synthesize of uh, M phase of vanadium dioxide. Uh, ah, and uh, and uh, uh, synthesized films uh, were investigated uh, 
by seam, X-ray diffraction and uh, resistance uh, ratio, uh, resistance uh, measurement at uh, different temperatures. Uh, uh, as a result of uh, such uh, investigation, uh, we found uh, effect of uh, PVA layer thickness on the main characteristics of P, uh, VO2 uh, films. Uh, they are uh, morphology and uh, uh, resistance ratio between ratio resistance uh, under normal condition and uh, uh, and heating. Uh, the main characteristics of, of uh, VO2 films uh, from typical four M phases uh, became change uh, typical to typical four B phases. Uh, investigation by uh, study by X-ray diffraction uh, confirmed this. Uh, that uh, we uh, we have shown uh, possibility uh, controlling of uh, phase con uh, phase composition on vanadium dioxide uh, films by. Uh, preliminary coating without uh, changing uh, synthesis condition. On, on the substrate with uh, passionately co covered, uh, we, was, we found uh, the, uh, that uh, where PVA uh, layer uh, was, uh, 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 B-phase grew. And uh, where uh, PVA layer was not, uh, M phase grew. Uh, thus, uh, we uh, the first time uh, uh, obtained experimentally obtained uh, uh, the rare selection of most uh, the rare selection most of the synthesis B and M phases on one substrate and in one growth process. Let's summarize. Uh, uh, <laughs> the morphology and uh, resistance ratio of uh, vanadium dioxide film strong dependent on PVA layer thickness. And uh, uh, PVA layer locally change uh, uh, synthesis concentration on uh, B phase vanadium dioxide and M phase vanadium dioxide. Uh, a new method the for the first time uh, for controlling the phase composition of synthesized uh, dioxide film was proposed, and the first time the area selective synthesis of BNM phases with one uh, substrate with a sharp boundary and uh, between them uh, was experimentally obtained. Uh, thank you for your attention. I understand you, if you grow your film on PVA or without PVA, you have different yes. phases. But you say that you obtain the dependence on the thickness. And so can you show the, this plot? Mm. So with the, this dependence. So how is it reproducible results? Or you have only one experiment? Mm, uh, serial experimental was. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is uh, uh, <clears throat> each other. It is was every time, yes. every time. So, but so you have different difference. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can you? Uh, this organic layer, PVA, uh, polyvinyl alcohol. Polyvinyl alcohol. Can be dissolved by temperature changing, for example. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. If you annul the sample, uh, will PVA evaporate? 
И, и, uh, in in uh, synthesis condition, PVA uh, was uh, removed. Yeah. Uh, uh, decomposition uh, was already uh, done. Yeah. Yes. So uh, in at the end, at the end, you have silicon partially covered by uh, vanadium oxide uh, with different phases. Yes, right. yes, uh, like and this. The, the next question, is it possible to produce, say, uh, vanadium dioxide first, then PVA on the top, then uh, with another phase and have super lattices? <laughs> Such experimental uh, not, uh, <laughs> not, not done because uh, didn't done uh, but uh, we uh, too uh, interesting uh, uh, it is interesting for us to you tried it already no, no not yet no. But but this is in your plans you didn't run you tried you plan to do this yes so no questions Thank you very much. So now, Jan Medebura, you are welcome to present your report, Influence of the Elemental Composition on the Surface of the Gallium Nitrite Layer on the Surface Energy of Ammonium MBE. topic of my research influence of the elemental composition on the surface of the gallium nitrate layer on the surface energy in ammonia MBE. Introduction and problem statement. So gallium nitrates quantum dots are used in various fields of science, science and technology. For example, they can act as single photon emitters like as an active region and light emitter diodes and laser diodes, also in high speed infrared photo detectors. And to use in a particular field, it is necessary to you know, that quantum dots are, has some such unique parameters like high crystalline quality, high uniformity in size, so low size, and high or low density. And to formate the uh, gallium nitrate quantum dots with the required parameters is a significant problem. To solve this problem, it is necessary to study the mechanism of the formation of gallium nitrate quantum dots. Uh, quantum dots. <coughs> Quantum dots are usually formed by the Wolmer-Weber or slansky krastanov mechanisms or by the droplet epitaxy method, for example. But in case of gallium nitride quantum dots, there is one more method called the modified slansky krastanov uh, mechanism. So what is it? Uh, a thin two-dimensional gallium nitride layer, uh, about two nanometers thick, grown on aluminum nitride, can transform into three-dimensional islands uh, when the growth is interrupted and the ammonia flow is turned off or the temperature rises. Uh, such transformation we will call 2D to 3D transformation or tra transition. And to, on the slide top right, you can see typical shared image of gallium, gallium nitride quantum dots. And the uh, bottom right is typical diffraction patterns for the three-dimensional state of gallium nitride surface. <coughs> uh, to the experimental study. Uh, on the slide, you can see kinetics of the three-dimensional reflex intensity uh, when we turned off the ammonia flow at different temperatures. So let us highlight some important behaviors. First of all, the maximum value of three-dimensional reflex intensity decreases with increasing temperature. Second one, uh, second, for temperature above 790 degrees Celsius, after a certain time, the three-dimensional intensity begins to decline. And the third one, uh, 2D, 3D transition has a certain delay, the time after which the three-dimensional intensity begins to increase. And decline of three-dimensional intensity after of uh, study about two-dimensional, three-dimensional transition are actually associated with the thermal decomposition. So we decided to check it and did the following experiments. So here is <clears throat> uh, the same two-dimensional gallium nitrate layer, two nanometers thick, was first heated and then cooled in a temperature uh, range indicated on the slide, and the low flow of ammonia. <clears throat> uh, the main consequences of these curves is that after a cycle of heating and cooled, uh, the maximum intensity, it didn't, change, it didn't change significantly. That means that despite there is a thermal decomposition, it isn't responsible for the decline of the three-dimensional reflex intensity. So we associated this decline with the reverse transition or transformation of three-dimensional three dimensional islands back into 
Elastic Strain Film. And to explain the reverse informed transition, uh, let us consider chemical reaction occurring on the gallium, gallium nitride surface uh, in an ammonia flow. Uh, each chemical reaction has its own constant, and each constant, constant reaction, each constant uh, determines the rate of the reaction, and each component can occupy different space on the gallium nitride surface. Also, we should be taking into account that actually particles can uh, occupy different energetical positions. Uh, uh, we can consider the change in delimiter composition by compiling a kinetic model uh, in the form of system of differential equations, which is not shown here, but is in, in additional slides. <coughs> uh, from the change in the, surf uh, in the elemental composition, we can proceed to a change in the surface energy, surface energy of two-dimensional gallium nitrate layer by formula on the slide bottom, where theta is the degree of depletion. Uh, in the result, calculated curves can explain forward and reverse transition. So how do we explain this? After um, we turned, on, turned off the ammonia flow, surface energy begins to increase. After surface energy criti uh, hit critical value, which is marked on the slide, <coughs> uh, forward transition begins. Then after surface energy reaches its maxima and start to decrease, uh, it's again hitting critical value and the reverse transition begins. Now to the conclusions. Uh, it was found in this fog that the gallium nitride layer, after being transformed into partially relaxed layer covered with 3D islands, forward, forward transition can be transformed back into a two dimensional elastically strained layer reverse transition. And to explain the forward and reverse transition, a kinetic model was proposed in which change in the surface energy gamma is associated with a change in the elemental composition on the surface after switching, switching off the ammonia. That's all. Uh, yeah, yeah. So please, your question. Thanks for your input. Uh, uh, there are some yet, uh, experiment to pro prove uh, your theoretical model, and are you planning to do it? Actually, yes, we have some experiments that prove this. For example, uh, after when we turned on turned off the ammonia flow and the intensity start to reach, we turn on the, the ammonia and uh, surface is immediately become two dimensional, and this kinetic model actually um, explains this too. And moreover, for example, we just don't just turn completely off the ammonia flow; we slow it down by 50 percent or sixty. And once again, this theoretical model also uh, also explains this too. So yes, so, we have some. So can you show? No, no it's not here because it's already a lot. Uh, this is the kinetic model. <clears throat> so I would expect uh, to see actually the 2 d transition. So what is the proof that uh, that this transition takes place? Is it just uh, the changes of Diffraction pattern or, or what? Diffraction pattern, IFM images, Asher TM images. Can, uh, do you uh, have no? Uh, only, uh, uh, you, you just showed the uh, transmission from microscopy image. That's it. And diffraction, uh, yes. <laughs> diffraction pattern. Here it's not only here. It's yeah, but uh, the, the, your problem here is the diffraction pattern you measure from the surface of the sample. Yeah? And transmission electron, uh, transmission electron microscopy images uh, is done when the quantum dose is embedded. It is, it's, it's embedded? Yes. yes. But uh, you should know that when you uh, deposited, uh, say, aluminum uh, nitride on the top of the quantum dots, quantum dots should be changed, and sometimes it can be changed drastically. So, therefore, uh, to my opinion, it should be uh, more, um, more or less direct evidence that you, you still have on the surface quantum dots as well as in the bulk. So it means that some optical measurements or uh, atomic force microscopy, either uh, scanning electron microscopy images, should be presented. 
Okay, uh, I can explain. I mean, uh, this two-dimensional to three-dimensional transition, actually, it's not uh, the key of the work here. So it's already was studied in some other works and there was uh, IFM Im images or in other methods. But here I just want to, it was the problem because this uh, transition didn't was explained, did it explain? Uh, and by this model it can be explained now. So what is the process that uh, caused this uh, transition? No questions. No. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> A new technique of our nano pattern formation for metal assisted chemical etching on silicon. Institute of Semiconductor Physics and Cities. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I am glad to present my research work a new technique of uh, gold nanopattern formation for metal-assisted chemical etching of silicon. Uh, in recent years, a semiconductor structure with high aspect ratio, such as uh, nanowires or nanopillars, um, uh, have been of great interest. Uh, due to the uh, unique uh, uh, electric, optical, thermal properties, uh, they are used to create uh, solar cells, vertical transistors, gas sensors. Uh, it is important to emphasize that exactly highly ordered array are needed to create uh, a number of applications such as photonic crystals or integrated circuits. Uh, thus, a simple technique uh, is required to propagate such structures over a large area. Uh, the method of uh, metal-assisted chemical etching a so-called uh, MACE method uh, allows one to obtain structures with uh, aspect ratio greater than 160 to 1 smooth walls. And this method uh, doesn't require special conditions such as uh, vacuum or atmosphere dangerous gases. The essence of uh, this method uh, consists in the local ex uh, uh, dissolution of uh, sem uh, subst uh, semiconductor substrate only under the metal layer uh, in uh, liquid etchant uh, containing uh, hydrofluoric acid and hydrogen peroxide. The catalytic reduction of hydrogen uh, peroxide to water takes place on the metal surface, which uh, leads to uh, whole injection from metal to the semiconductor and the local oxidation of silicon proposed only under the metal catalyst uh, layer. And then uh, hydrofluoric acid uh, dissolves uh, with air of oxidized silicon. Uh, the key uh, stage and problem of uh, the MACE method is the formation of metal nanopattern um, while maintaining the purity of uh, um, semiconductor surface under the metal layer. Uh, in our work, we have uh, developed uh, non trust operating for MACE method. Uh, non trust operating allows one to obtain metal pattern over a large area with nanometer resolution and uh, on almost any substrate. Uh, on the slide, you can see uh, essence of this method. Uh, uh, a thin metal layer is deposited on a surface, a stamp surface then uh, a transfer metal from stem surface to a substrate surface uh, uh, occur um, during uh, mechanical contact. Uh, in our work, we used this metal twice to form nanogrid uh, on silicon wafer. Um, but um, until now, no one uh, applied uh, this method uh, uh, for uh, mass, uh, metal assist chemical agent. Uh, because there are problems uh, of uh, creating uh, a clean, uh, non uh, clean uh, semiconductor surface under the metal layer. But uh, um, in our work, we um, managed to solve this problem by using uh, additional water-soluble polyacrylic acid layer and uh, new method uh, of removing this uh, layer in uh, water vapor while rotating sample in on centrifuge. Uh, we found the optimal condition made, uh, uh, which made it possible to completely remove polyacrylic acid and form 
perfect gold nanogrid on silicon substrate. On this same image, you can see nanogrid on silicon substrate. At the final stage, uh, the operation metal cis chemical etching uh, was performed. Uh, as the re reaction goes on, uh, nanogrid uh, uh, was sinking down, uh, forming an array of silicon nanowires with uh, square cross section corresponding um, geometry of this nanogrid. Um, also, this method allows one to obtain more complex uh, structures. For example, in this uh, same image, you can see superperiodic gold nanogrid. Uh, using this nanogrid, we obtain an array of nanopillars with uh, various cross uh, uh, section geometries. Uh, the minimal uh, nanopillars diameter is 10 nanometers. Uh, these structures can find application in optics, for example, uh, 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 plasmonic uh, metamaterials and metasurface at, at, at extra. Um, thus, a new method of formation of metal pattern over a large area for maze method is proposed. Uh, gold mesh on a uh, surface of three each silicon wafer and ordered array of silicon nanowires uh, were created. Superperiodic gold uh, nanomesh were fabricated and superperiodic silicon substrate were created from arrays of nanopillars of various cross section geometry. And uh, originality and simplicity of the method make it possible to create technology for mass uh, formation of uh, high spectration and structures over uh, semiconductor surface, uh, a, a large area of more than 150 square centimeters. Uh, thank you for your attention. For an interesting report, so questions. In this case, uh, we needed exactly extremely ultraviolet lithography. This is method very complex and very extensive method. But uh, and um, this method uh, I needed uh, additional uh, operations. For example, uh, lift-off uh, lift lithography, re reactive ion etching, and additional uh, operation to clean surface from uh, residual contamination. But our method uh, is more uh, simpler and uh, an expensive method. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, did you remove the gold grid uh, after the etching process? Uh, yes, uh, we need for it uh, Kali wash uh, etching. And yes, we all, no, no, ash, um, I, no, hydrogen, hydrogen, yod, yod. <laughs> No, high I etching. Yes, yes, we right. can remove. Uh, so this was the web etching. Uh, uh, are you sure that you uh, fully removed gold from this uh, grid by web etching? Did you so popular or something? Yes, um, uh, gold nanostripes uh, very uh, good. Uh, no, we good uh, very. In this same image, we see these uh, gold uh, nano stripes. And if, if, if we remove, uh, we can see that. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, um, this is totally, is it totally uh, original technology, or if you have some uh, historical background? Um, <laughs> um, the method in print lithography uh, used... Uh, no, I mean this method when uh, the gold stings down. Yes. Is it 
completely new. So it's your know how or something similar was done already? No. Um, in, Or in other words, what is already done and uh, what new idea uh, were brought here? There are problems uh, forming nano, gold nanopattern uh, on silicon substrate. Uh, without uh, some, uh, we need a clean surface under the metal layer. And uh, another work uh, used. Uh, uh, photolithography and then use reactive iron agent and uh, additional layer. But in case uh, we use only one additional layer and... I mean, uh, did some, someone already uh, perform similar experiments when gold thins down? Or it's your original uh, findings? Yes, uh, I... Uh, Is it your know-how or uh, it was done already in the research? We obtain uh, exactly highly auditory, but uh, uh, the method, metal system purchase, uh, already known. Already. It's known. Okay, then uh, the second question. As a result of uh, your technology, you have uh, H2 silicon F6 compound. It, how toxic it is, how dangerous it is. Uh, we used very small uh, hydrofluoric acid and, and enough. I mean, is it toxic? Yes, uh, by, but uh, we used very small, uh, very small volume. Okay. The question is how toxic? It doesn't matter yes, uh, hydrofluoric acid it, is very it toxic. Depends on the toxicity. Yes, it's but toxic. but Once we it's use toxic and yes. in which groups it is. But uh, uh, we use uh, in liquid form, not gases. Mm. But you show here you see bubbles. Uh, this, uh, this is liquid agent contain hydrofluoric acid, uh, uh, hydrogen yeah, peroxide, and on the right hand side. H2 silicon F6 bubbles, so it's gas, right? Yes. Okay, so then it can be evaporated, you can smell it. <laughs> yes, but it's uh, this uh, very small volume. No. Yes. Okay, but you know the group of toxicity of this? Place. Yes, uh, pro uh, but I... Uh, Maybe it can be like chemical weapon. Okay, uh, then probably the next question. So you showed that you uh, were able to produce the uh, gold gratings. Now the question is, is it, does it work only for gratings or any kind of uh, gold structure can be drawn on the surface? Yes, uh, uh, for it uh, we use uh, uh, stamp, uh, polymer stamp and uh, if we have another form, we another form and but the gold. Create antennas, yes. uh, say cylinders, whatever you want. Yes, right. yes. Thanks. Thank you for the report. Uh, how much uh, etching rate do you obtain? Uh, in this case, uh, etching rate. Uh, 700 nanometers per minute. Okay. Yeah. It shows the standing electron microscopy image of the superperiodic structure. So, next. Uh, do you consider, did you consider the effect of charging of our particles by scanning electron microscopy by electronic beam. Uh, uh, char charging effect ah. of our particles by electronic beam. Uh, 
you, did you consider the effects? We not have this effect. Thank you. Now, for this image, we use electron beam lithography or electron beams scanning electron microscopy. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about mentioning more. I, I just uh, caught uh, that some of the scanning electron microscopy showed the absolutely vertical uh, cylinders, and some yes. of them are declining. So, what is the reason? Um, uh, we obtain uh, uh, a number of uh, same image. You know, uh, various uh, position and uh, this uh, nanopillus is vertical. Yes. Yeah, but but sometimes, sometimes they decline. What is the reason why? Ah, they uh, mm, there are models uh, and theoretical theoretical models, um, uh, maybe uh, crystallographic orientation and uh, can. Uh, how much uh, hydrofluoric is, uh, hydrogen peroxide and then high mu how much uh, holes we need. Uh, and then we obtain uh, vertical transition, uh, vertical nanostructures or another, another form. And we, uh, we can use a magnetic field. If we use not a gold, uh, uh, for example, nickel, Now I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, show please uh, this your experimental picture with print. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not here. Yes, this one. Yeah, yeah. So are they vertical or they are not vertical or is it simply they need image from some? Uh, yes, uh, in this case, yes. uh, not vertical. Not vertical. And and how you uh, achieve this? And next. Uh, Yes, so, so what do you change if you want to uh, make different? Uh, um, there are explanations uh, this effect, but are in, in for orientation 111, but in this case, uh, sub silicon substrate 100, zero, zero, and um, no, we now have uh, explanation of this effect. And uh, next uh, study, we plan uh, study these uh, effects. This is occasional result. This is occasional result. Yeah. No, no, no. So, but no, no, no. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Almost uh, substrate. Yeah, okay. But the question is previous, please show the previous slide. Um, next. Yeah, they are vertical. Yeah. Yes. The, the next slide shows their decline. What you did? to change the uh, orientation. Uh, this uh, very small time and uh, high, this uh, nanowires uh, about uh, 300 nanometers, but this uh, nanowires uh, two microns. So you always have that? Yes. And the orientation of your is one? Orientation one, one zero zero. Ah, uh, one zero zero. So some etching can isotropy, no? We don't have it yet. Okay. Any other question? No? Thank you again. So are you ready, yes? But I have no uh, title of your report. It's not from me at least. I will start. Uh, good day, dear colleagues. First of all, I would like uh, to thank the organizing uh, committee for the opportunity to participate in this conference. My name is Mikhail Poznikov. I am a graduate student from National Research University of Electronic Technology. Uh, the topic of my uh, speech today is the simulation of sensitive element of a man's best pressure sensor operating on the thermal detection principle. Uh, in the modern world, uh, MEMS pressure sensors are used in a variety of branches of science and technology. For example, uh, main aircraft, uh, mechanical engineering, uh, 
uh, medicine and uh, chemical industry. Uh, the use of twin film uh, MEMF technology to create membrane pressure sensor uh, ensure very high sensitivity at uh, relatively small sizes, uh, which plays an important role, to, uh, role in the design of device for measuring the widest possible range of uh, pressure with high accuracy. Uh, currently, we are many pressure sensors, the main of which are capacitive, electromagnetic, uh, piezoelectric, optical and uh, resonant type. Despite the fact that each of the sensor uh, has its own advantages, uh, which are presented on the slide. However, there are also a number of disadvantages, uh, such, a, such a narrow pressure range, thermal and uh, mechanical instability of sensitivity, and etc. Uh, what limit the range of their application? Uh, in this regard, it is important to develop uh, a pressure sensor based uh, on new physical principle, what eliminates the shortcoming of existing sensor device. In this regard, uh, I propose a new concept of pressure sensor based on the thermal detection principle operating in the wide range of subatmospheric pressure. Uh, the sensor consists of uh, a deformable metal membrane and the fixed dielectric membrane located in a cavity filled with a gas uh, with low thermal conductivity. The upper diaphragm deforms under the uh, pressure drop, which leads a heat outflow, a change in the thermal resistance and uh, temperature of heater. Uh, this change is quite sensitive to small deformation of the heat conduction membrane. Uh, the proposed concept uh, has the following advantages. Uh, high resistance to temperature, vibration resistance, uh, high sensitivity in subatmospheric pressure range, and uh, the last uh, low power consumption. Uh, the main uh, problem can be called selection of the optimal uh, sensor design to increase uh, its sensitivity, selection of membrane materials to ensure sufficient uh, mechanical strength and uh, thermal conductivity, and selection of the optimal gas environment inside the cavity of sensor element. Uh, the console multifix cut system was used to design the structure and uh, simulate the physical process of work. On the current slide, you can see the design built uh, in this program and the parameters used in the modeling. Uh, however, in microelectronic device with very small uh, dimensions, uh, then relay number uh, less than uh, 1070. 700, the problem of uh, membrane deformation and the uh, thermal problem can be concerned uh, independently. Uh, in the future, you can see the result of modeling of uh, deformation of the membrane under uh, excessive pressure. The sensor can be used uh, the same way as an altimeter. Uh, what is the membrane will bend outward. The next step was to analyze the deviation in both direction to study the behavior of the membrane. Uh, as can be seen from the uh, right graph, the membrane has the same displacement pattern in both directions. Uh, the next step was to simulate the behavior of the heater temperature on the left slide as function in the left slide for three different gases. The graph of uh, which you can see on, on the left, uh, different pressure, uh, different temperature are associated with uh, different thermal conductivity of uh, gas medium, what you see on the uh, previous slide. The right graph shows the temperature increment as a function of the pressure drop. The final uh, functional dependence is the sensitivity of the pressure to the pressure drop. Of the sensor. Uh, both graphs are presented in uh, logarithmic form. As uh, can be seen so from the graph, the uh, sensitivity changes slightly in a uh, range close to atmospheric and uh, monotonally decreased with increasing pressure. Operating pressure range is uh, from 10 to uh, 100 uh, kilopascal. Uh, the maximum sensitivity is 25 uh, millikelvin pascal for uh, xenon as uh, working gas. And the uh, next step, a visual representation of some steps of the fabrication process flow carried out on the TCAT system. The simulation of the fabrication process flow was carried out in the order 
to access the possibility of uh, manufacturing a thermal pressure sensor for this fabrication process flow. The final design membrane-based uh, thermal conductivity pressure sensor uh, could be obtained by applying uh, wafer bonding technology. And uh, at the moment, the first batch of the sensor can, has been manufactured according to the topology shown on the slide for subsequent uh, experimental measurement. And uh, the last, uh, the develop, development uh, was also supported by GCS uh, Medsil. Uh, you can see the support letter and the clipping from it on the slide. Uh, thank you for your attention. Yes. Yeah, thank you. So I have a couple of questions. You said that uh, pressure sensor should be stable under a different temperature. And my question, what was the external temperature in your simulation? Uh, in my simula simulation, reference temperature is uh, 20 uh, grams of... So it's room temperature, right? Yes? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. if you use uh, material which properties strongly depends on the temperature, how can you say that such sensor could be temperature stable? Mm. Uh, this concept uh, pre stable to temperature because uh, uh, the heater uh, cooling through the membrane and uh, has a low cooling from the other material uh, such as uh, silicon and uh, silicon oxide. Okay, and can you tell what kind of material or maybe what properties of your elements which, uh, which you used as an uh, active element, uh, temperature dependence element? What kind of material do you use? Um, in, in this work, uh, I used uh, polysilicon, but um, I don't know uh, what uh, enough materials can be used. Uh, in this work, I uh, uh, proposed uh, polysilicon. Okay. It's not studied. Yeah. Just, uh, it's not a question, it's like suggestion. Su 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 um, I think you should check uh, temperature stability. Like you should change an external temperature and see how your sensitivity change through the temperature. Not not just in the room temperature, but... Uh, temperature. Yes, you're absolutely right. Okay, it's, so it's uh, your next plan, maybe. Okay, thank you. In the, I uh, missed your explanation. Could you please repeat once more what the physical unity is you are measuring? So, uh, what the principle um, which will be further converted to the pressure? Uh, okay, I uh, repeat. Uh, uh, they have uh, upper uh, default uh, membrane and the uh, delicate membrane with uh, heater and uh, thermocouples, uh, sensing element. Uh, uh, after uh, upper... Temperature. Hmm? Temperature. Yep. Which will, will be further converted to the pressure, right? Um, no. no. Uh, uh, change uh, pressure on uh, uh, upper uh, membrane uh, change the heater temperature because uh, uh, cooling uh, uh, overheat flow uh, uh, because uh, heater uh, cooling through the membrane and uh, temperature on uh, heater is uh, change with uh, external pressure. 
but you didn't answer the question. What the physical unity is measured? Is it, what, what signal was measured? So temperature. 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 Yeah. Um, but uh, after that, we can uh, transform it to uh, to signal. Uh, milli volt, milli. No, yes. Uh, hello, thank you for your presentation. Uh, what uh, is the size of the chip and uh, how it's compared to traditional uh, tensor resistive chip? Uh, tensor resistive pressure such. Uh, on the sample, what I uh, what was in the last picture, we can see uh, the sizes of uh, sensor elements. We can see, unfortunately. Uh, on the, on the right picture. We can see sizes. On the right picture. And uh, also can see. Uh, yeah. final design was uh, one millimeter or uh, one point five. Uh, so it's uh, smaller than traditional. Um, uh, of our, our pressure sensor can be smaller, uh, but uh, uh, he uh, haven't uh, the width uh, range of uh, measuring pressure. Uh, operating pressure range is uh, 0 0.5 uh, Pascal. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? No? Thank you very much. And now, at the end, we have two reports online in Zoom. So, are they ready, reporters? Yes. Yes. So, the first one will be uh, presented by Mikhail Ivanov from Yofa Institute. High voltage, take a second range. Uh, sharpening diodes communicated long pulses double avalanche injection versus plasma extraction hello my name is mikhail ivanov i'm from yofa physical technical institute st petersburg russia from the laboratory of power semiconductor devices and my phd advisor is dr pavel rodin uh, uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, pulse sharpening diodes, which are called silicon avalanche sharpeners. These diodes are based on the effect of the delayed avalanche breakdown, which was discovered by Grehoff and Cardoso Soev at Fiofa Physical Technical Institute. And they represent the fundament of sub nanosecond pulse power semiconductor electronics with a long list of civil and uh, defense applications. This diode looks like a common semiconductor diode, a high voltage diode, uh, and uh, it is switched on in a very peculiar regime by a steep voltage ramp applied to the device in, a reverse, in the reverse direction. Uh, the switching time is ultra short, less than 100 picoseconds, and uh, thus, you can form uh, current pulses uh, with the rise time with less than 100 picoseconds and uh, currents of hundreds uh, of amperes in serious load. Uh, usually, the pulses which are formed by this diode are bell shaped, but in certain applications, it is important to consider longer quasi rectangular pulses. Then the matter of post-switching dynamics becomes very important. And it is the post-switching dynamics, what happens after switching, which I'm going to focus on in my talk. Usually one doesn't expect from a reversely biased diode to conduct any current. Uh, however, our uh, calculations show that uh, the a uh, silicon avalanche sharpener uh, uh, remains in the conducting state and the current persists after the uh, sub nanosecond switching. This happens due to the establishment of the double avalanche injection regime, 
which happens due to uh, very high voltage applied to the device in the reverse direction. The next question which we have to ask is how long will the device stay in this regime which supports conductivity? It turns out that not so long because a double avalanche injection uh, is accompanied by negative differential conductivity. And negative differential conductivity leads to uh, homogeneous current instability and current filamentation. Uh, so the process of current filament formation is shown on this slide. Uh, here you can see current density. Finally, the filament is at the, one, at the one border. And of course, when the current is filamented, the temperature starts to rise. And one could expect that the device would be soon destroyed by local heating. And indeed, when you look at the temperature graph, you can see that first, uh, when the current is homogeneous, uh, the uh, temperature rises very slowly. And then when the current uh, is filamented, the temperature starts to rise very fast. But now stop for a second, look, why does this curve, which was increasing so high, turn and start to decrease? This happens due to the hopping of the filament uh, from one part of the device to another, because the the temperature has negative effect on impact ionization and it is impact ionization which keeps the filament conducting. So now I come to the conclusion. We see that uh, uh, when the uh, silicon avalanche sharpener commutates very long pulses, uh, the maximum duration of the pulse is determined not by the uh, recovery process as people thought previously. It is determined by uh, double avalanche injection and current filament formation uh, and the maximum duration of the pulse, uh, which uh, the diet can commutate without being destroyed, can reach half a microsecond. Thank you. Ask good questions. Yes? Are there any yeah. questions? Uh, thank you for your presentation. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I can hear. Uh, what uh, physical mechanism stands behind of uh, negative um, resistance? Uh, Actually, uh, the mechanism is uh, can be illustrated by this picture. Can you see it? Uh, the uh, green curve uh, represents the uh, electric field in the uh, base of the diode, and uh, the avalanche inject double avalanche injection, which uh, is the reason of uh, uh, of uh, this negative differential conductivity, uh, it looks like this. Uh, when you increase the uh, current, uh, the maximum maximums at the uh, right and left border uh, of the electric fields rise, and the field in the middle of the structure base uh, becomes lower, and uh, the integral uh, electric field, which is voltage, uh, starts to uh, decrease with increasing current. So that's the, uh, the effect. Uh, so it's not temperature related effect, only an electric no. effect. Negative differential conductivity is a, is a, is a thermal effect. Uh, so, uh, increase of temperature leads to decrease of uh, breakdown voltage. Uh, am I right? Um, yes, uh, the local increase uh, in uh, conductivity uh, in uh, temperature leads to uh, uh, suppression of impact ionization, actually. Uh, okay, thank you. So, 
Other questions? No? No questions. Thank you very much for your report. Thank you. And now, now uh, this, we come to the last report. Uh, this is uh, also online. Gallium arsenide plan of nanowire growth on bits of gallium arsenide 11A substrate that we were done by Anna Spirina from the Institute of Semiconductor Physics. Hello, my name is Spirina Anna, and the title of my topic is Gallium arsenide planar nanowire growth on bits of gallium arsenide 11A substrates. Um, semiconductor nanowires, uh, one is one dimension, dimensional crystals with length much greater than diameter. Uh, in recent years, much attention has been paid uh, to planar nanowire growing along the substrates. These wires are well compatible with traditional, planal, uh, with traditional planar device technology. Um, experimental growth uh, is carried out on the with snow substrates. So uh, angle of surface deviation from the singularity should be taken into account. We analyze the influence of surface misorientation on planar nanowire growth using Monte Carlo simulation. Calculations were carried out from um, in in the Silicium 3D software complex. Um, we used a five component system uh, which considered atomic and uh, molecular arsenic and gallium in liquid and solid form. And uh, film mask material that persuades the substrates. The atomic events including in the model are listed in the slide and the probability of each event um, is determined by activation energy. Uh, we considered with an all gallium arsenic one on a surface with two opposite uh, deviation direction. Uh, that is, steps are climbing from left to right or right to left. During gallium and arsenic deposition, gallium droplet is uh, uh, gallium droplet is formed on the surface and um, dissolve the mask film, reaching gallium arsenic substrates. Uh, then, under the droplet, gallium arsenic uh, begins crystallization and um, three-dimensional gallium arsenic crystal is formed uh, under the droplet uh, layer by layer. Uh, on the uh, lateral three-dimensional crystal surface, maximum three one on b facets uh, can be formed. These facets uh, determine the nanowire growth direction. Um, on which null surface, growth rate of one on b facets perpendicular to the step is uh, decreased, decreased and um, so uh, the um, planar nanowire grows uh, in the upper in the upper terraces direction is limited. Uh, so planar nanowire grow in two other available directions. With opposite misorientation angle, the wire grows perpendicular to the step if is possible. Um, under the same growth conditions and the mask film properties on singular surface, planar wire growth. And on width node surface, vertical, uh, vertical wire growth. Uh, this is so because steps are sinks for atomic and gallium adatoms. To obtain planar wire growth on, on the width node substrates, it is necessary to um, to increase the uh, diffusion inflow of, of gallium and arsenic into droplet from the substrates. So uh, the conclusions, uh, the self-catalyzed planar gallium arsenic nanowire grows on which not gallium arsenic one on an A surface um, 
is considered using Monte Carlo simulation uh, and um, the growth conditions and surface properties providing the planar nanowire growth on with snow surface should be changed compared to the single surface to obtain planar wires on vitsinal substrates, it is necessary to increase the arsenic and gallium diffusion inflows to the catalyzed droplet. And the nanowire growth direction is determined by the gallium arsenic crystallography, but can be limited by the vitsinal surface steps. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, okay. and you? Yes. Uh, okay. Well, I have a question. Um, so you did uh, some kind of simulation, but what is the purpose of this simulation? Are you going to grow such structure? And if you do, uh, where we can use the structure, uh, the structure like this? Um, if I understand your question, uh, we use the Monte Carlo model with uh, uh, Simbank uh, model of crystal, and uh, we can change um, uh, some uh, energy parameters, uh, like like uh, diffusion energies or energies of dissolution uh, of gallium arsenide, and uh, we can change temperature of experiments. Uh, time of experiments. Okay. Uh, well, my question was: Are you going? Uh, are you planning to do it in like in real life? Are you planning to grow such structure, or it's just a simulation? Oh, oh. Uh, in this work, we um, we present just modeling results, but um, and and experiment result uh, we have not, but. Um, but I believe then <laughs> that <laughs> that sometime we we can we can experiment experimental growth uh, provide. Okay, and can you tell me where we can use such structure for what purpose? Is it uh, going to be like a photonic crystal or something else? Can you tell me? Um, uh, for example, for example, transistor field effect transistor or hand transistor where, where this uh, nanowire used like um, channel. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have a question. Is uh, the crystal structure and composition uh, uniform along the wire? Uh, have, have some defect uh, in in the model yes, uh, model um, I, I cannot see clear from here uh, is there any defects like extra planes of gallium or arsenide in this wire um, these defects can uh, could uh, form uh, in the uh, during the growth process, but um, we we use uh, we use the soil growth conditions um, <clears throat> in which we we don't see some some defects in planar wise. Thank you. Well, no questions. No. Thank you. Bye Thank bye. you. Yes. Thank you, all participants. Our section is finished. And now I have certificates for each participant. And you can come to me and I can give you this. It's not uh, prices, of course. Tomorrow the winners will be allowed, but now you can simply co come and take this paper. Thank you all reporters again. <laughs>
15 years ago, Huawei's first distributed base stations were born in the Netherlands, one of the most densely populated countries in Europe. As with most European countries, installation of new base stations was more expensive than the value of the equipment itself. With distributed architecture, a large base station was slimmed down into a very small box, which was connected to an amplifier through an optical fiber cable and placed on the rooftop. This made it easier to find an appropriate site, significantly reducing the rental cost of the equipment room and lowering power consumption. Installation became much easier. In 2005, Huawei's innovative distributed base stations were deployed for the first time in the Netherlands. More than 90% of the existing sites were leveraged for 3G equipment. This reduced the total cost of ownership by one-third, which ultimately benefited end users. Huawei DBS solutions have become the benchmark for mobile base stations ever since. Because of the ease of installation and lower operational costs, the innovative solutions also contributed to lower call costs. Between 2000 and 2010, the price of telecommunications fell in many EU member states. 